Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Greater Hazleton Health Alliance pregame show here on WYLN for the regular season finale of high school football coming up at the top of the hour. The Cougars of Hazleton area play host to the Berwick Bulldogs. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you to the regular season finale of high school football here on WYLN. I'm Marty Burns, joined once again by the coach, Joe DeMelfi. And, coach, we got this uh, rivalry, rivalry matchup between the Dogs and the Cougars. Uh, We've seen it in this history that a lot of times records don't mean anything, but uh, Coach Curry has the Berwick Bulldogs undefeated at 9-0. Yeah, heading for the playoffs and obviously uh, focused at this point. I think when we look at the statistics over the last maybe 25 or 30 years, Berwick holds a decided edge. But as you said, Marty, in this kind of game, sometimes that doesn't make a, a lot of difference. And earlier on tonight, I had the chance to chat with the veteran head coach of the Berwick Bulldogs, George Curry. Coach, we're heading into week number 10, ending the regular season. Uh, your team 9-0, and and I know looking at your stats that uh, you use a lot of players, and I know our long-lost buddy Tim Thompson would, all, would be saying to you, Coach, the dogs are deep. <laughs> Every time I hear that, I think of Timmy. God bless him. But uh, we're deep in some positions, but uh, we're young up front. We've got a young line, I mean. We'll see what happens. All right, Coach, uh, how important is it for your team to finish off this uh, regular season strong tonight and go to 10-0? and Well, you want to win every game. I mean, whether it's the first game, the middle of the season, the end of the season, it would be nice to go. One of our goals is to go on. Well, we have a lot riding on this. I mean, if we win this game, we win our, our championship. Right. The way the point system is in the Valley, even if, if we're tied with, with a 9-1, and it'll be a co-champs, okay? even though we beat Crestwood 41-7. But the way I look at it, you want to win every game. We want to get home seat in the playoffs. We want to win that Wyoming Valley Conference title. And, and we came a long way. You don't want to have a flub right now. You know what I mean? Now, Coach, you're here against Hazleton area. What's uh, one of the biggest challenges that this Hazleton area team presents to your squad? Well, they got talent. Hazleton's a talented football team. I mean, there's no question. They got good kids. The Zikowski kids are tough. Uh, that George kid, I mean, those receivers, that, that Oaks, that kid is tough. I mean, I got some linemen that'll, that are gorillas, uh, that De Despirito and, uh, and Gasser. I mean, those guys are tough, I'll tell you. They got a good football team. You saw it last week against an undefeated East Strasburg South team. So if we get through the motions, we're going to get beat. All right, Coach, last question for you. And I hesitate to do it. What do you got to do to beat Hazleton tonight? I'm going to tell you what I tell Tim Thompson. <laughs> Score one more point. That's what you got to do. One more point. Coach, as always, I appreciate your time. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Okay, Joe, uh, we moved to the other sideline in Hazleton area. Uh, one of their star players, especially in this second half of the season, has been the running game of Zach Zukoski. And one of the numbers we'll keep track of, he needs 52 yards tonight to surpass the 1,000-yard mark, which I think would be quite an accomplishment for this young man. Uh, it will be. I think one of the things you have to mention, and Coach Curry, I believe, mentioned it when he talked to you pregame, is their offensive line has done a very good job for their running backs, Zukowski, George, Oaks. They've done a, an excellent job getting the ball up the field. That's one of the things that they have to make work tonight. They have to be able to rush the football to keep Berwick off balance. Heller's shown he can throw the football, Hazleton's quarterback. But they have to have a balance to be able to hang in there with the Bulldogs. And the other thing that Coach Curry mentioned, uh, he noticed it, and I think we, we talked about it a little bit last week. Hazleton area found something on the right side of their line be behind A.J. Gasser and Chris Despirito where they had a lot of success, especially last week against East Strasburg. And South. we've mentioned the offensive line in the last several broadcasts many times for Hazleton area. As I said before, they're going to need that line tonight. They've done well in special teams. Something else that they need to do is cover punts and kickoffs like they've been doing. And they've also been able to return some kickoffs for good yardage, sets up their offense. They need to do all of those things, I think, to be competitive tonight against a, a Berwick team who right now is on a roll. Okay, earlier on I had a chance to chat with Hazleton area head football coach Jim Drumheller. I can't believe I'm saying this. We're at week number 10 already of this 2013 season. Uh, before we talk about tonight's game, tonight is also senior night. Uh, just talk a little bit about the senior class that, uh, unfortunately, you're going to be saying goodbye to in, uh, in a few short minutes. There's no doubt. Great class. Uh, been with me for three years now. Extremely hardworking, um, not only at practice, but we're talking about going back to December. 
And you could tell just the way they play on the field, how far we've come as overall as a team strength-wise. And it also hasn't helped our speed. And, and they worked their tails off from December right, up, right through the summer months when we came out here for our, our field drills and that. And, um, you know, we, we wish the record would have been a little bit better than it was. Um, I thought we had a chance to win some, op win some games and some opportunities slipped away from us. But uh, overall, I'm very, very proud of this uh, senior group. Now, uh, one player that's not a senior has a chance to get 1,000 yards tonight, and that's Zach Sukoski. Just talk about his progression from week one to here in week number 10. Well, just his progression from last year to, to, uh, to the way he ran the ball this year. He's running in between the, ta in, in between the tackles, and he really trusts this O-line. Um, they've done a great job for him, and we've talked a number of times about them, but I, I like how hard Zach is running the football this year. And, um, you know, he had some problems holding on to the ball last year, but he, but he's, he rectified that, and uh, he just had an outstanding season for us. Now, your team here at home is 2-2. Two and two. Uh, Obviously, two victories are always exciting, but those two losses, you had chances in both games to come away with a victory. Just talking about how that confidence can lead into a tough game tonight against another undefeated team in Berwick. Well, there's no doubt. You talk about those two losses. Um, both times, I mean, against Scranton, I, I believe there was close to four minutes to go in the game, and we had the ball uh, down by three. And, uh, again, last week we were down by a touchdown uh, with them punting, to the, punting the ball to us with 340 on the clock. So we were right there. It, it, it's just that, you know, there's two games that got away from us. But... You know, it's senior night. It, it, Berwick got some incentive, uh, incentive to the game, but we're treating this as a playoff game. Um, and, and these seniors are just going to let everything hang out on the field. And if they play um, error-free like they did last week, we didn't have any penalties against us. We committed one turnover. If they play like that, and I know they will, um, it should be an exciting football game. Now, you mentioned Berwick. Uh, they come in 9-0. and I know uh, a team 9-0 and is going to present a lot of challenges. What's the biggest one that concerns you? Well, they, they don't have really any weaknesses. Um, they run the ball very effectively, and, and when you try to come up and, and put eight guys in the box, they'll very easily go play action and throw it over the top. So um, we have to play our best football game of the year. They're sound in all areas, and we have to be able to match that. All right, Coach, last question for you. What does your team have to do tonight to finish the home season with a reigning record of 3-2? and two? Play as close to a perfect game as possible. And what I mean by that is no penalties, no turnovers where we shoot ourselves in the foot, and um, play with that enthusiasm that I know they're going to play with tonight. Well, Coach, I appreciate your time all season long. Good luck tonight, and thanks for joining us. All right. Thanks, Marty. Okay, going on uh, down on the field, it's senior night here at Hazleton area. Uh, the football managers, football team, and band members, senior members, are going to be honored uh, before tonight's game. And that's part of what Coach Curry finds Hazleton area to be so dangerous. A, it is senior night, a lot of emotion just in the Hazleton area seniors. It is a rivalry game between Hazleton and Berwick. And three, Coach Drumheller even mentioned it, they're considering this their playoff game here tonight. And I think there are several things. Number one, the senior night is built in motivation. Uh, number two, Hazleton has struggled through the year, have played well in spots. So Coach Drumhill are looking for that motivation that gets them over the top. You have a team going to the playoffs, 9-0, and team that's going home. Their season is over after tonight. And I think one of the things that Coach Curry can point to, they're 2-2 two and two here at home. Obviously the two victories are big, but in the opener against Scranton, and then last week against East Strasburg South, two potential playoff teams that they had chances to beat here earlier in the season. And they did that because their running game we talked about earlier. Their running game got them to a point where they had a chance to win the game. So if they can make that go early, they could make it interesting. Okay, we're going to take our first break of the pregame show. As mentioned, senior night festivities has started here at Harmon Guys Stadium. As we are high atop the Ray Saul Memorial Press Box here at Harmon Guys Stadium, we'll take the break and continue with the Greater Hazleton Health Alliance pregame show and coming up at the top of the hour, the undefeated Berwick Bulldogs take on the Cougars of Hazleton area live high school football here on WYLN.
Your family's good health begins with a great team. That team is the Alliance Medical Group. We're the first health care provider in the greater Hazleton area to offer a fully integrated approach to family and specialized medical care. Our expanding network of more than 30 physicians and specialists are trusted by thousands for routine and complex medical treatments. For a convenient appointment at any of our 15 regional offices, simply call 501-4-AMG. Alliance Medical Group. Your health. That's our specialty. What do you see? Perhaps you're noticing the rusted fender or the dented side panel. Maybe the first thing your eye goes to is the worn interior. But look closer and you'll see something else. Value. At Harry's You Pull It, we see value in your old car and so will others. It's the reason we offer top dollar for your car. Junker, clunker, piece of tin, your car may have many names, but at Harry's, there's only one that matters. Value. Visit one of our three locations today in Hazleton, Pennsburg, and Allentown. This is a home. This is your neighbor's home. This is another home furnished by Grand Central. All these rooms in all these homes makes everybody so happy. It's so easy to do. It's your room made your way. It's local. It's Grand Central. This week at Grand Central, the price on the floor is the price to your door and not one cent more. No tax, no delivery, no kidding. It's now. Floor to door prices. Everybody shops Grand Central, making your house a home. Route 309 in Hazleton and on Route 11 in Exeter. We welcome you back to the Greater Hazleton Health Alliance pregame show here on WYLN. Coming up at the top of the hour, the Bulldogs of Berwick taking on the Cougars of Hazleton area. And we are live here at Harmon Guy Stadium. I'm Marty Burns, joined by the coach, Joe DeMelfi. And um, currently on the field is the senior night festivities continuing here as senior football managers, senior football players, and senior band members are honored before tonight's game. And we'll get a chance to hear from the Hazelton area marching Cougars before the end of the pregame show. But, uh, Joe, one young man that we haven't talked about for Berwick, uh, a young man that uh, Coach Curry knows very well, C.J. Curry, a quarterback. And, and this young man's done uh, a, a phenomenal job in the two years under uh, Coach Curry, and especially this season. And I think this is his biggest stat, 16 touchdowns, only three interceptions. Yeah, we always talk about the quarterback being the person that drives the bus, and I think C.J. has done a very good job with uh, the offense, make sure it's balanced, uh, running and rushing. Uh, and again, Berwick uh, has a fairly young offensive line. They've done a great job for uh, overall for that football team. And the statistics always look good for the players that get the press, but you can't forget about the guys in the trenches who, who do that work. And for Hazelton area, as we mentioned, uh, the junior Zach Zukoski having a chance for 1,000 yards tonight. The number is 52 yards to get him over the 1,000-yard mark. We'll keep an eye on that as the game goes on. But uh, these seniors, uh, I know Coach Curry mentioned a couple of them in, in Nick George and Jeff Oaks, uh, a couple of uh, real hearts of this team that uh, come next year, Coach Drumheller will have to replace. Yeah, I, I think in a game like this, Marty, there's always the, the element, and uh, as I say in coaching, you look at this is what we're going to do. And then when the kickoff comes, all of a sudden you have to be very good on your feet, both as a player and a coach, so that you try to right the ship if it goes wrong or keep it on a, on a good plane. And I think both of these coaches have done a nice job of that. Obviously, uh, when you look at records, you say, well, Coach Curry's done a great job with it, which he has. And, Winning his coach in Pennsylvania, he's always done a good job with that. I think Coach Drumheller, and especially over the last four or five games with the teams they've played, several playoff teams, and as we mentioned earlier, they were in several of those games right up until the end. So you never know what can happen. Bad snap, fumble, that type of thing. Um, the seniors at Hazleton 
would love to go out with a win over a playoff-bound Berwick team. Especially in a rivalry game. And the, the one game that uh, I hearken back to that we did down at Crispin Field, uh, the gentleman next door to his coach, Patron, was uh, coaching the Cougars. I believe at that point they were 8-1 and one on the move to the playoffs. And, and Berwick, under Coach Campbell in his first season, were 4-5. and five. Uh, Hazel Tenary was looking to cement themselves a possible home game. But that Berwick team came out with a very good game, got to 5-5, five and five, was a springboard for a very successful next season. And it just sort of reminds me of that kind of scenario that Hazel Tenaria can maybe uh, return the favor if they can come away with a victory tonight. Yeah, I think one of the things Hazel Tenaria has to think about is let's stay close. They can't allow a four-touchdown gap to occur. If that happens, they're really going to have a tough time. But if they can stay close in the third quarter, start to gain some confidence, Maybe that can happen. And one of the things Coach Drumheller mentioned in the in the previous segment is almost a perfect game. You know, you don't want to commit too many penalties. And the big thing is can't turn the ball over to this football team. Oh, exactly right. When you give them, them being the Bulldogs, an opportunity, they have shown over the past nine games they'll take advantage of it. So Hazel Tenary cannot turn the football over. And it's two-pronged. A, you don't want to give them the short field. But B, if you're in their own territory, in their territory, you don't want to turn the ball over and give up a scoring well, opportunity either. Well, I think either. the other thing is when Hazleton area is, is in that territory, they have to come away with points early on. I think you move the ball, you know, get some uh, yards on the ground, but they have to be able to come, out, come away with points. If they can't do that early on and Berwick's able to squeeze a couple of scores out, that just makes the game tougher for the Cougars. Okay, I... Wanted to make sure to grab this because I don't think we've shown this on camera all season, Joe. The official beverage of the WYLN sports crew, Hazel Park Water Store Spring Water. And uh, we're going to have a little bit of this as we head to break. You're watching the Greater Hazelton Health Alliance pregame show here on WYLN. Coming up at the top of the hour, the Bulldogs, Cougars, right here on WYLN, the regular season finale of high school football. Your family's good health begins with a great team. That team is the Alliance Medical Group. We're the first health care provider in the greater Hazleton area to offer a fully integrated approach to family and specialized medical care. Our expanding network of more than 30 physicians and specialists are trusted by thousands for routine and complex medical treatments. For a convenient appointment at any of our 15 regional offices, simply call 501-4-AMG. Alliance Medical Group. Your health. That's our specialty. It's Oktoberger. The sale's so big, they named a month after it. This 14 Jeep Patriot Latitude 4x4, you can buy it for $22.7 or lease it for $214. I also have a Chrysler 200 Limited. Buy it for $21.9 or lease it for only $189 a month. Or a Chrysler Town & Country Touring, you can buy that one for $26.9 or you can lease it for $299 a month. It's Oktoberger at Burger Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, Route 93, Hazleton. For a dealer that will take the time to get to know our needs and hook me up with something that has some all-wheel drive and some power Bam! and what will you be using the car for primarily cycling snowboarding kayaking you know gardening antiquing and commuting to work I've got just the car. Lease a 2014 Subaru Forester 2.5i CVT for $199 a month the right car the right price the right dealer fairway Subaru yeah We welcome you back to the Greater Hazleton Health Alliance pregame show here on WYLN. Coming up at the top of the hour, live high school football. 
as the Cougars of Hazleton area play host to the Berwick Bulldogs. We thank you for joining us on what is an absolutely beautiful night for football, considering it is November the 1st, Joe. I mean, I, I was talking to somebody before the game. Other than last week, and all last week was was cold, the weather has been uh, perfect for uh, at least our games through the year. Uh, I know there was the one game, uh, the one weekend where uh, they got a lot of uh, heavy thunderstorms and such in the Scranton area, but uh, for us here at, at uh, all our games here in the game of the week on WYLN, YLN, the weather has been perfect. One of the things I thought about coming up tonight was uh, I don't ever remember a 60-degree evening in Hazleton at the end of the season. Um, when I came up, I looked at the uh, temperature. It was about 64 degrees, so it is a nice night for football. One of the things I looked at, Marty, I was looking at Berwick's starting lineup. They have one senior, Kyle Sterley. They have one sophomore, Zach Beckley. And then the rest, Ginger, Pierce, Perla, Woodishek, are all juniors. So you're looking at an offensive line on the Hazel, on the uh, Berwick side, relatively young. Hazelton area starting alignment. You have Chirico, Kopchinski, Benet, Gasser, Despirito, Zukowski, all seniors. And what they'd like to do is leave with a victory. And what better way to springboard yourself to 2014 if you're Coach Drumheller, then to come away with a victory, spoil an undefeated season for Berwick, your rival separated by, uh, what are we talking, Joe, 20 miles? About 20 miles. And uh, one of the other things you think about, especially night, with beautiful night, we've got a turf field, so that shouldn't be a, an issue at all. The wind blowing a little um, left to right as our camera looks at the field. But overall, a perfect night for football, Marty. So we... We really shouldn't, you would think that we shouldn't have to worry about fumbles, handling the ball, that type of thing. As I said, the wind maybe in a kickoff or a punt situation might become a factor. And uh, both teams boasting uh, uh, solid kickers. Uh, Olivia Seeley for the Bulldogs, uh, she's converted on 43 extra points this year and had a 27-yard field goal. We've seen Tristan Williams, uh, three field goals this year, uh, his long of 29 yards, and uh, Coach Drumheller not afraid to utilize him in uh, their kicking game. And um, so it'll be very interesting to see if, if one of these teams can come away with uh, some type of advantage in that special teams game. I think one of the things when you look at a team that's undefeated, you almost expect that their kicking game was pretty good during the year. They, they'd covered well. The, the punter has got the ball down the field. Kick out, kickoff man maybe gets it in the end zone or um, inside the 10-yard line. Uh, you look at Hazleton area, record right now does not really indicate. I think their kicking game has been fairly decent for the games we've seen them. Uh, you mentioned Williams. Uh, their coverage has been good both on punts and kickoffs. So that's something I think uh, tonight we need to watch. Could be a break either way uh, with the kicking game. And it'll be very interesting to see. Uh, a lot of teams have had different philosophies with this Hazleton area return game. Uh, very dangerous with both Sukoski and Oaks. Uh, teams early in the year were, were kicking to them, and uh, they were being burned by it. And uh, uh, during that middle stretch, we saw some teams uh, kick off to or kick short, and that set up Hazelton area in some great field position. And uh, as of late, uh, especially last week, East Stroudsburg South, uh, for the most part, kicked off deep. Zukowski had that big 40-yard return on the one kickoff. So it'll be very interesting to see what Coach Curry and his staff comes up with as far as an approach for the return game for Hazelton area. Yeah, I think if you're if you're uh, coaching and you're doing well. Uh, you have good coverage on kickoff and punts, as I've mentioned. You're going to go ahead and kick it away. I don't think you're going to try to keep it short, to keep it away from the from the deep men. Now, uh, there may be an occasion where you want to kick to a corner because then your coverages will adjust to that corner, and that helps you. You see many times on television, um, colleges and pros, they'll kick to a corner and their coverage converges on that. Converges on that. And one of the things that does, Marty, is 
they tell the man farthest away, don't let him get outside you. It's easier for him to keep the ball inside. So um, it's, it's an important part of the game. I, uh, there's no doubt that both of these teams have done it fairly well. And we are live here at Harmon Guy Stadium. Senior night festivities continue here at Harmon Guy Stadium as the senior members of the football managers, the football team, and the high school band have been honored here in pregame before we get started tonight in this matchup between the Bulldogs and Cougars. And um, I guess one of the other concerns I would think for Coach Curry, and we'll mention this when we... Uh, get on the air for our game broadcast. We thank you for watching all season long in this regular season, the Greater Hazelton Health Alliance pregame show here on WYLN. Coming up at the top of the hour, it'll be the Cougars and the Bulldogs. Regular season finale of the high school football game of the week right here on WYLN and it's next. There's a fine line between great and amazing. Great technology changed your TV, but Metrocast technology will revolutionize how you watch it. Like multi-room DVR. Start a show in one room, finish in another. Or record, pause, rewind, and replay on all three. You deserve amazing. Multi-room DVR and so much more with Metrocast. Tennyson's Incorporated Machine Shop in Hazleton and Whitehaven. They specialize in automotive, industrial, and small engine parts. If you want reliability and quality, go to Tennyson's. Call them at 570-455-7761 or in Whitehaven, 570-443-9513. Schumacher Engineering Incorporated, providing diversified consulting engineering services throughout the Northeast for over 30 years. Call 455-9407 for Schumacher Engineering Incorporated. Award-winning children's recording artist Laurie Berkner will bring her music to Hazleton when the Laurie Berkner Band performs at the Wiltsey Center at the Historic Castle on Saturday, November 23rd at 2 p.m. Doors open at 12.30. Tickets may be purchased through WiltseyCenter.org or at Ticketmaster retail outlets including select Boscoffs and Walmart locations. The Laurie Berkner Band, November 23rd at the Wiltsey Center at the Historic Castle. As a diabetic, where do I turn for the special health care products and advice I need? Come into your nearby Good Neighbor Pharmacy. We specialize in the unique concerns and needs you have as a diabetic patient. Your Good Neighbor Pharmacist has a fully trained staff, stocks a broad selection of the products you need, and takes a personal interest in your health and well-being. Now, Hazel Park Spring Water is proud to announce that they are the official water of the WYLN Sports Crew and available for home delivery through JW Wargo Spring Water Delivery and JoJo's Beverage. Since 1915, the Chrysler family has been serving the area with quality meats. The tradition continues today with five generations at Hazel Park Quality Meats, 260 Washington Avenue, West Hazleton, and Reading Specialty Meats, located at 216 East 4th Street in Berwick. Here are some of this week's specials. What do you see? Perhaps you're noticing the rusted fender or the dented side panel. Maybe the first thing your eye goes to is the worn interior. But look closer and you'll see something else. Value. At Harry's You Pull It, we see value in your old car and so will others. It's the reason we offer top dollar for your car. Junker, clunker, piece of tin, your car may have many names, but at Harry's, there's only one that matters. Value. Visit one of our three locations today in Hazleton, Pennsburg, and Allentown.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the regular season finale of high school football here on WYLN. The undefeated Berwick Bulldogs have traveled to Hazleton to take on the hometown Cougars of Hazleton area. You are looking live at Harmon Geist Stadium in Hazleton, home of the Hazleton area Cougars. Thank you for joining us for WYLN's continuing coverage of high school football. I'm Marty Burns, joined by the coach, Joe DeMelfi. He has returned, coach, Joe Flanagan on the sidelines. Jim Burns on the stats. And as you can see, the Hazleton area Cougar captains, the Berwick Bulldog captains, heading out to midfield to meet with referee Jay Rowan. Let's head field level for tonight's opening coin toss. Senior night, that's what. Okay, Hazelton, you want the ball? Sure. You attempt to kick or goalie goal? You can put your back straight. Hey, Hazelton, right here. I got 22. Hazelton, one and will receive. And we're going to see that Hazelton area offense, particularly that running game right off the bat, Joe. Hazelton area won the toss. They want the football to start tonight's game. The Bulldogs of Berwick will go on defense to start. It'll be very interesting to see uh, what prevails to start this game, this Hazleton area running game, or if this Berwick defense can stop it. Yeah, I think one of the things defensively when you look at the Bulldogs, they've been very aggressive. They get to the ball. They run the field very well. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they match up up front with uh, the defensive line because of the Hazleton area offensive run, uh, game, the running game especially, has been very effective this year. So that'll be something we look for early on, the matchup between the offensive line and the Cougars and the defensive line of the Bulldogs. And uh, as I was mentioning near the end of the Greater Hazleton Health Alliance pregame show, I would think, you know, he won't mention it to his team, but I would think uh, Coach Curry and his staff uh, a big concern tonight on the eve of the playoffs. You really want to get out of this injury free if you could as well. Yeah, and Berwick has had several injuries, and we're going to talk about that in a little while, um, that have uh, that have really uh, taken some key players from them. So you're right, injury always a, a big factor. Had a little chance to check out the officials, Jay Rowe and the referee, Al Williams, the umpire, Steve Grzmiski, Harry Kasky, Bill Monahan, Mike Monahan, fill out the officiating crew. We now pause for our national anthem. That was the Hazleton Area High School Marching Band performing tonight's national anthem. We are moments away from the start of tonight's game here on WYLN. Thank you for joining us. Week number 10. Can you believe it's here, Joe, already? The end of the regular season. We keep talking about it all the time. We can't wait for it to begin, and before you know it, it's over. And um, we've had some very good games this year, Marty. Uh, I expect uh, this one to be a, a good one. And as I said, if the Cougars can keep it close, um, they may have a chance. Get a look at Olivia Seeley wearing number 31. She'll kick it off. Back deep for the Cougars. Number six, Jeff Oaks. Number 33, Zach Zukoski. And a short kickoff as tonight's game is underway. Fiddled by one of the upmen, that was Joey Basic. And Basic is going to be pushed out of bounds near the 35-yard line. And that's where the Cougars will start week number 10. As they'll be in the red going from left to right on your screen. Marty, there's a good, good indication of a 
direction kick, and there's the Hazleton offense. Chirico, Kopchinski, Benet, Gasser, Despirito up front. Glenn Zukoski to tight end. Oaks and Gavin, Kopchinski to receivers. Nick George, Zach Zukoski behind quarterback, Ryan Heller. Zukoski will go in motion out of the backfield. Heller throws to Oaks, complete. Oaks has a first down and more, lose one tackle. He's in the Berwick territory. Will the Harrys you pull it first down? Came out with trips, a little bit of motion. Hit it. They hit Oaks on that uh, quick slant. He was under the secondary, Berwick in that zone, and picks up good yardage after making the catch. Ball marked at the Berwick 47. Some late changes by the Bulldogs. Heller again out of the gun. This time he'll hand off to Zukoski, and he is dropped for a loss of about two on the play, making the tackle Tanner Weaver. We're we'll going to look at that Bulldog defense. I'm sorry, Joe. Five yeah. man front. Vandermark, Grassley, Pierce, Petty, Mazonki. Weaver, we saw him there with that big hit with Stout as the linebackers. Klinger and Kowalski, the corners. Winner and Thomas, the safeties. I think if uh, Hazel Tenere going to have to throw it just a little bit to open it up. Weaver stepped up, made a great tackle right at the line of scrimmage, which ended up as a two-yard loss. Zukoski again in motion out of the backfield. Heller looking for the screen to George, and he loses his footing in another loss, officially making the tackle Alex Klinger. And that'll set up Hazel Tenere with a third down and 14 back at their own 49. I'll tell you one of the things that happened, J Vandermark, A.J. Vandermark, defensive end for Berwick, put a lot of pressure on Heller. And he was trying to drop that ball in there and got a little short. <laughs> so we're looking at third and long for the Cougars. Go, Don't forget Ray! the official beverage of the WYLN sports team, Hazel Park Water Store Springwater. Bulldogs coming with pressure. Heller's pass is tipped by Klinger, incomplete, and it'll bring up fourth down. Alex Klinger was able to get over Berwick coming after Heller with a little bit of pressure, and then Klinger comes over, makes that play, tips it over the receiver. Cougars will look to punt it away. Back deep for the Bulldogs. Number 21, Dane Kowalski. Number 22, P.J. Wiegand. Tristan Williams to punt it away. This will be Wiegand from the 19. And he's going to be chased down from behind. Nice special teams play there by Jeff Oaks. Oaks down the field very quickly. Something we talked about pregame. Hazelton area has done a nice job on coverage. Punts and kickoffs. Oaks right there. Gonna look at that Bulldog offense. Sterley, Beckley, Ginger, and Perla. Would have shook the tight end. Forsen, Wiegand, the receivers. Kowalski and Stout behind quarterback C.J. Curry. Curry the senior, 6'2", 195. 16 touchdowns, three interceptions on the season. And he'll roll right, and he's gonna keep it. Curry out across the 25 to about the 27 for a gain of about four on the play. Burke shifts the trips right, very tight trips. Curry runs a quarterback, sweep to the right side and picks up good yardage on a first down. Four man front for that Cougar defense, Beltrami, Benet, Gasser and Oliver. Castillo, George, Zukoski, Ed Bielen in at linebacker as Zach Zukoski will go out the corner with Joey Basic, Jeff Oaks the safety. Curry hands it off to Kowalski. Kowalski has a first down and more. He's in the Cougar territory. And he'll be brought down near the 40-yard line by Joseph Oliver, but not before Dane Kowalski picks up a big. Harry's, you pull it. Bulldog first down. Dane Kowalski has been a very good player for the Bulldogs this year. He was able to get the ball up the field. Plays well on defense, so key part of the Bulldog team. Picks up big yardage and the first down for the Bulldogs. Kowalski coming into tonight's game, 680 yards rushing but 7 yards per carry plus 16 rushing touchdowns for the Dogs. First and 10. It's a handoff to Kowalski again. Kowalski has 
about nine on the play. He didn't quite get the first down, but another big run by this Berwick offense. There's a little bit of a counter trap. The two up backs in front of Kowalski. One kicks out, one leads up, and Kowalski takes it off the right side. Again, one of the things we talked about was the matchup. Berwick defensive line, Hazleton offensive line, Hazleton defensive line, Berwick offensive line. And right now, the Bulldogs up front doing an excellent job. Second and two, and Kowalski again bounces off the pile, gets pushed back. We'll see where forward progress gives Dane Kowalski Castile leading the charge for the Cougar defense. If you think you've seen that play before, you have. They ran it the play before. Same play, kick out. The remaining back up the field, but that time Hazel, Hazel Tenere does an excellent job with their defense forcing a third down. Third and inches. They have to get to the 31. Ball mark just shy of the 31. Empty backfield for Curry. And he'll keep it. C.J. Curry inside the 30 to the 29. Good for another. Bulldog Harry's you pull it first down. Good push for the right side of that offensive line. Ginger Pierce Perla. C.J. Curry is able to get the ball above the marker for the first down. So the Bulldogs on the first possession moving the ball, Marty. Ball marked at the Cougar 29, first and 10. Kowalski again. Dane Kowalski still on his feet. Gets down to about the 20-yard line. Another big gain on first down, second and short. Coming up for the Bulldogs. That was a power play kick out. Nice kick out block by Vandermark, who also plays defensive end for the Bulldogs. I think one of the things you have to do if you're Hazelton, I don't know that you can just sit in the defense. I think you have to send people up the field, do some, do some different type of movement to try to confuse the blocking. Play action, Curry to the end zone, incomplete. They'll say force was out of bounds. Third and short coming up. I'll tell you what, Andrew Force has been a force for the Bulldogs. He really um, has turned into a very good receiver. He's tall, he's about 6'3", good size. When you get him on a matchup with the defensive back that's 5'8", five, 5'9", five, you have to go after it. Nick Zach Zukoski on the coverage. Third and short for the Bulldogs. Curry keeps a lose one defender. Gets inside the 15 to about the 11. Good for a Harry's you pull it first down. There is a, this is just a fake inside. Good down block by Vandermark again. But this is a fake inside. Vandermark got the block that sprung Curry around the corner. But there's no other, that's not an option. There's nobody to option to. There's no other running back. So you got that fake inside, which people have to honor. You do that with a down man and a linebacker. But then Curry's coming around the corner. You need quick run support from your secondary. The Bulldogs in the Grand Central Red Zone. The toss to Kowalski. A host of red shirts converge upon him after he gains about three on the play. A.J. Gasser brought him down. Gasser did a great job along with the... Uh, the help of some of his friends on this toss play. You want to try to get downhill as quick as you can. Kowalski had nowhere to go. So we're looking at a second and about six yards. One thing that the Bulldogs are doing in this instance, moving the ball, Marty, but you look at the clock, there's 5.56 left first quarter, so they're eating clock also. Curry out of the gun. Rolls right, looks, throws to the end zone, has force. He's in, and now they're gonna say he's out of bounds. Right at the stick. Yeah, the official had him right there. He couldn't control his momentum. C.J. Curry sprints toward him. We talked about it right there, and he had one foot in, but the other foot went out because he couldn't pull him up, himself up quick enough. So Bulldogs have third down and about, looks like less than a yard, Marty. And 
and they're gonna go to Jordan Stout for the carry and the Berwick touchdown. I'll tell you what, anytime that ball was about on the two or three yard line, watch this push by that offensive line. And there you see it, not too many defensive people up the field, which is where you have to be to stop that play. Stout, 6'1", 230 pounds senior. Follow that big offensive line into the end zone. His fifth rushing touchdown on the year. Olivia Seely for the point after. Hold is bobbled and lost and recovered by Hazel Tenaria. Point after, no good. 5.39 left in the opening quarter. Bulldogs lead it, 6-0. It's Oktoberger. The sale's so big, they named a month after it at Burger Mazda in Hazleton. Hi, Jerry here, Burger Mazda Hazleton. It's Oktoberger. We've got a great deal for you. 2013 Mazda 3s starting at just $15,495. It's brand new. Or sign and drive, $159 a month. You can't beat that deal. Test drive a Mazda today. It's Oktoberger at Burger Mazda, just off I-81, exit 145, Route 93, Hazleton. Tri-County Business Machines has been serving the Hazleton area with office supplies and furniture for over 35 years. We are your local Kia Sarah dealer for all your digital Kia Sarah copiers, printers, and faxes. For exceptional reliability, sales, and service, the call to make is to Tri-County Business Machines. Tri-County Business Machines, keeping your office up to speed. Tri-County Business Machines, located at 117 East Broad Street, Hazleton. Phone 459-0754 or visit us on the web at tricountybm.com. Welcome back to Harmon Guy Stadium. The Bulldogs take their opening possession. 77 yards in 11 plays and lead it 6 0. Seeley a short kick, but this is Basic. And he is going to be brought down at the 26. Forward progress may give him the 30 yard line as Zach Andrus on the tackle. He'll give him forward progress to the 29 yard line. Berwick doing a good job of coverage. Again, that directional kick. Cuts the field down. That time, Basic tried to go wide field, but he has to go almost one side to the other, over 50 yards. So the Bulldogs were able to get down and make the tackle. Mentioned that long drive by the Bulldogs. They took 430 off the clock and were 3 of 3 on third down. And Kowalski, five carries, 54 yards on that drive. Zukowski taking it wide. Able to pick up some positive yardage out near the 35-yard line again. Well, it looks like where they mark him out of bounds will be about four yards. Yeah, missed tackle right there. Then Zukowski keeps trying to stretch it. Finally runs out of room, but does pick up four yards. Heller out of the gun. Zukowski in motion to the bottom of your screen. They fake to him and give to George. George will get maybe a yard or two. Is not fooled on the play is Jordan Stout, who came up with the tackle. Fake to the motion man, gave to the uh, back coming back in the opposite direction. Jordan Stout does a nice job of playing his responsibility. Makes the tackle, third and five for Hazleton area. I think the Cougars... Uh, they came out in the first series, Marty, through that quick slant and picked up good yardage. I think that's something they, I know you, uh, as a coach, you have to think to yourself, we don't want to turn over. You can't play scared. I think one of the things they have to do is go to the short game, short passing game. Low snap, a pitch to Oaks. Oaks trying to get the first down. It's going to be very close as coming up to make the tackle was Kowalski. Kowalski with a sure tackle on Oaks, and it looks like he may have picked up the first down. They will move the chains. That run by Oaks, good for a Harry's you pull it. Cougar first down at the 39. See the time remaining on the Burger Family Dealership scoreboard. Bulldogs up 6-0 over Hazelton area. A 
He'll sling it out to Oaks. He's looking to throw it. Looking for Kopchinski. Incomplete. I'll tell you what, winner with a heads up play. Would be easy when that bird right here, ball's throwing. It would be easy if you're in the secondary to break up on the ball. But Winter does an excellent job playing his responsibility. We look at second down for Hazelton area. So Zukowski will be alongside Heller as he goes out of the gun on this four receiver set, second and 10. Some movement up front. I think we're gonna have an offside against the Bulldogs. Looked like the defensive end on the right side took a step up the field very quickly before the snap, unless he was drawn. And he was not. So it'll make it a second down and five at the 44. 4-11 left in the opening quarter, 6-0 Bulldogs. We thank you for joining us tonight on WILN. I'm Marty Burns, joined by Joe DeMelfi, Joe Flanagan on the sidelines, Jim Burns on the stats. Heller this time under center gives to Zukowski. Weaver met him, but not before Zukowski spun and gained about four yards on the play. He was, that was a good job of running the ball by Zukowski. He hit at the line of scrimmage, picked up a couple. Big third down for this Hazelton offense. Third down and two from the 47. Heller out of the gun. That's gonna be a direct snap to Zukowski. The Bulldog defense not fooled. Klinger, and I believe that was Vandermark, on the play. Here you see him, Marty, right side. And, and as you mentioned, Vandermark again with the tackle, help from Klinger. Looking at fourth and about uh, a long three for the Cougars, or a looking to punt it away again. Kowalski and number 28, Kyle Trenholm, back deep for the Bulldogs. This will be Trenholm from the 26. And he's gonna be brought down by Oaks from behind after a return of about four yards. Oaks again with a great job on uh, punt coverage. Hustles down the field, make that tackle after a very short gain. Here you see him, the reason he's down there got by the person who was supposed to block him. You need to, it's hard to make a downfield block, but you need to shield that person. Or, Marty, with your field, on, with your position on the field, force him to go around your outside shoulder, that time it'll take him longer to get there. And uh, maybe after this play, I'd like to, to mention about Jeff Oaks, as it's a first and 10 for the Bulldogs from their own 30. This will be Stout, and Stout with a big run on first down. Looks like they give him about five to the 35, but Jeff Oaks, very speedy player, has uh, shown some good hands in the receiving portion of the game for Hazelton. He had a big interception last week in their game against East Stroudsburg South, but 5'7", 150, and, and Joe, if you were a coach and had the heart that Joe, Jeff Oaks had uh, with every player on your team, you'd be a very successful football team. You know, you have the bench press, you have uh, vertical jump and all those other things to measure. Nobody can measure a heart and how badly a person wants to play. And that young man has definitely been a leader for this Hazelton area team and will be missed as Curry on second down finds Trenholm for a Bulldog. Harry Zupullet, first down out to the 44. Trenholm went to the right side and sort of ran a sneaky route. CJ makes a little shoulder move and then makes the throw to Trenholm for the first down. One of the things we said at the beginning of the game, Marty, don't let yourself get two, three, four scores behind because then you really are struggling. Hazelton defensively has to come up with a big play. 
Kowalski in motion out of the backfield. Curry looked that way, and he's going to be pressured and brought down for a loss. Joseph Oliver on the play. Great play by Oliver. What C.J. was doing, C.J. Curry, the quarterback for Burrow, looked this way, and he was going to go back to force, I believe. And um, nothing there. Oliver got up the field and made the tackle. Loss of three on the play back to the 42. Second down and 13. Empty backfield. Curry, quick drop, pass, tipped and incomplete. Looking for Trenholm. Tried to throw the quick ball right side. Ball got up on Curry when he made that throw. So we're looking at third and long for the Bulldogs. Curry will go out of the gun on third and 13. Rolls left. Looks under pressure. He's going to be sacked. Brought down by Charles Benet. We've seen Benet make big plays defensively for the Cougars. That time, C.J. Curry sprinted to his left, the wide field. Benet is able to get up the field and then make the sack. So the Bulldogs will punt it away after Hazleton defensively comes up with a big series. Alex Klinger to punt it away. Zukoski, Oaks back deep for the Cougars. Left-footed kicker, deep kick over Oaks' head. And it's going to roll inside the 10. Still rolling and be downed at about the six-yard line. And a big punt from Klinger changes field position. Cougars will start inside their own 10. We want to remind you that high school football on WYLN is brought to you by Northeast Gold and Silver Exchange inside the Churchill Mall. They're paying the highest prices for your gold and silver. Unwanted, broken, or new, call them at 570-497-4177. And by AM Delivers 19. AM Delivers Fast, free, reliable service used the same day. Dry cleaning service used by Cougar. Call Angelo today at 570-436-2705. Zukoski on first down. No gain on the play. It'll be second and 10 from about the six-yard line. Two things, Marty. We talk about fielding the ball as the first quarter comes to an end. Throw a quarter here at Harmon Guy Stadium. The score, Berwick 6, Hazelton area nothing. You're watching live high school football on WYLN. Award-winning children's recording artist Laurie Berkner will bring her music to Hazleton when the Laurie Berkner Band performs at the Wiltsey Center at the Historic Castle on Saturday, November 23rd at 2 p.m. Doors open at 12.30. Tickets may be purchased through WiltseyCenter.org or at Ticketmaster retail outlets including select Boscoffs and Walmart locations. The Laurie Berkner Band, November 23rd at the Wiltsey Center at the Historic Castle. Schumacher Engineering Incorporated, providing diversified consulting engineering services throughout the Northeast for over 30 years. Call 455-9407 for Schumacher Engineering Incorporated. We welcome you back to live high school football. Week number 10 here on WYLN. Berwick leading 6-0, and the Cougars deep in their own territory have a second and 10 from their own six. Talked about the importance of fielding a punt. That time Oaks let the ball, he could have, I thought, fielded the punt, but he let it go and it ended up inside the five yard line, not where you want to start your offense. This is Zukoski, gets stood up by Klinger, ball comes out, but they'll say he's down on the play. Picks up about nine yards to the 15. Third and short coming up for the Cougars. Strong run by Zukowski. Is able to get it up the field. Good yardage, and the Cougars 
looking to get themselves away from the shadow of their own goalpost. Opening minute of the second quarter, third and one for the Cougars. Zukoski gets stood up by the middle of that Berwick defensive line, and he may have lost about half a yard on the play, bringing up fourth down. You know, in the trenches, you have battles that occur during the course of the game. That was a battle right there. Berwick's defense won that. They got up the field, so instead of a first down and able to keep their offense moving, Hazel Tenaria looks like they're going to have to punt it away. It's very possible, depending on the punt from Williams, that the Bulldogs will win that field position battle and get great starting field position for this next possession. Williams gets off the kick that takes a Cougar roll and go out of bounds at the Cougar 49-yard line. That's where the Bulldogs will start first and 10, leading 6-0. Before we get too far along tonight, Coach Curry wanted to send out special hello to uh, one of his seniors. Will up to Grove did not make the trip up here to Hazleton. Uh, just left the hospital after having uh, some surgery. He is watching tonight, and uh, Coach wanted to, uh, from everybody in the Berwick football family to uh, send well wishes to Will and uh, let him know that they're thinking about him, and uh, we definitely echo those sentiments and wish Will up to Grove all the best of luck next year. He's going to be heading to Temple University. Will up to Grove was a major contributor to this Bulldog team. That injury, uh, I know, uh, hurt the Bulldogs. They're picking up and going on, but best of wishes to Will up to Grove. Oliver with another big hit on C.J. Curry as Curry gets maybe a yard, but these flashes that we saw last year of Joseph Oliver uh, started the year out where he was injured, but has come on late in this season where he's making those big plays again for Hazel Tenaria. Well, he's playing defensive end. He closes very quick. The lineman came out to try and look for him. Oliver was by the lineman, makes the tackle after maybe a yard gain. Bulldogs up six, over two minutes gone in the second quarter. Have a second and nine. Curry, quick throw to Trenholm. Trenholm leans forward, looking for the first down. That looks like the official spot is very close to a first down. You gotta be able to close on that quicker if you're a defensive back. Balin did a nice job closing on it, but he was inside. Defensive back needs to get up. Berwick outrushing Hazelton area 67 to eight in that opening quarter. Passing yards pretty even. Total yards, the Bulldogs 83 to 21 over Hazelton area. Bulldogs ran 16 plays to 10 and they had the time of possession advantage. 7.05, the Cougars only had the ball for four minutes and 55 seconds in that opening quarter. With 9.32 left in the half, they lead six nothing and they'll measure to see if the Bulldogs picked up a first down. Just shy, so third and inches coming up for the Bulldogs. I want to remind you, coming up at the half, we'll get a look at halftime stats brought to you by Burger Family Dealerships and compiled by Jim Burns. We're also going to have our final giveaways of this regular season. Give away a gift certificate to the Hollywood Diner and give away a weekender to Chef Buzz's Hole in the Wall. You may ask, if it, what is a weekender? It's a pizza and a pasta along with a dozen wings. So we're going to be giving away our final ones of the regular season coming up at the half. What started all of this was the, was the punt. Klinger with a great punt. Oaks didn't field it. Ball inside the five. Berwick with good field position, trying to convert a third and short for the first down. Stout gets the carry, gets the first down and more. Brought down at the 37, but good for a Harry Zupolet. Berwick first down. Stout can get the ball up the field. 6-1, um, about 225, 230. The handoff and a good push from that Berwick offensive line. Bulldogs pick up the first.
First and 10 for the Bulldogs. Curry out of the gun. Under pressure, Oliver again brings him down after a short gain of about one or two yards. I'll tell you what, Oliver does a great job coming off. Curry stepped up. Oliver came off the block and really closed down. After about a yard and a half, two yard gain, Oliver makes the tackle. Curry out of the gun on second and long. He's rolling left, looking. Still under pressure, rolling right, and he's gonna be sacked. Brought down by Carmen Beltrami. I'll tell you what, Beltrami makes the tackle. They double team the contain man. CJ doesn't go all the way to the corner, comes back. Beltrami makes the tackle, but you have to credit that secondary because there was a lot of time between the snap and when Curry was tackled. So Hazleton defensively again coming up with a big series, third and long for the Bulldogs. Coach, I was all set to share my football knowledge that I've learned from you after all these years. I was getting ready to call it the old coverage sack. Uh, you didn't learn much. I mean. <laughs> Timeout being called by Berwick. 7.29 left in the opening half. They lead it 6 nothing. What do you see? Perhaps you're noticing the rusted fender or the dented side panel. Maybe the first thing your eye goes to is the worn interior. But look closer and you'll see something else. Value. At Harry's You Pull It, we see value in your old car and so will others. It's the reason we offer top dollar for your car. Junker, clunker, piece of tin, your car may have many names, but at Harry's, there's only one that matters. Value. Visit one of our three locations today in Hazleton, Pennsburg, and Allentown. As a diabetic, where do I turn for the special health care products and advice I need? Come into your nearby Good Neighbor Pharmacy. We specialize in the unique concerns and needs you have as a diabetic patient. Your Good Neighbor Pharmacist has a fully trained staff, stocks a broad selection of the products you need, and takes a personal interest in your health and well-being. On the Burger Family Dealership scoreboard, Berwick in front, 6-0 over Hazleton area. After the Bulldog timeout, a third down and five from the 42. Curry throws downfield looking for force and incomplete. Nice coverage downfield by Joey Basic. Yeah, Joey Basic stayed with force all the way. The pass was not close. So fourth down for the Bulldogs. Hazelton defense, second series that they've done a very nice job putting the stop to that Berwick offense. Good pressure, good coverage in the secondary. The Bulldogs are gonna come out, looks like to punt it away. Klinger will go back deep. We're gonna try to pin the Cougars deep. Klinger rolling, and he gets it off. And this looks like it's headed for the end zone. So the touchback will give it to the Cougars. Klinger with a strong leg. Both punts have been uh, very well struck. The Cougars start at their 21st and 10. With 7.14 remaining in this opening half. Mention coming up at the half. Get a look at the Burger Family Dealership halftime stats. A couple of giveaways. Gift certificate to the Hollywood Diner. A weekender from Chef Buzz's Hole in the Wall. So stay tuned at the half. We might be announcing your name coming up if you filled out those entry forms at either of those fine establishments. A pitch by Heller to Zukowski. Zukowski has almost 10 yards, depend on the spot. Big run on first down for the Cougar Junior. Zukowski, nice job, made the fake and pitched to 
going left. Pitch to Zagowski going right. Winner with a good open field tackle to bring Zagowski down after, as you mentioned, Marty, about nine yards. They need very short yardage for the first down. And Zukowski didn't get much, but he got enough for the first down at the 30, which is a Harry's you pull it first down. Just was able to punch above that uh, first down marker. Look at the officials making the spot. So Hazel Tenaria moves the ball on that short series of downs, then continue to do that. 622 clock running, second quarter. Bulldogs up by six. Zukowski again, and he is going to be brought down by the ankle by Klinger after a gain of about nine yards. Very nice job, Zukowski. Good kick out block right there. Zukowski picks up good yardage off of an excellent kickout block. He's able to turn it up the field, so the Cougars moving the ball on this Hazel, um, on this Berwick defense. Second and short. Oaks in motion to the bottom of your screen. Heller swings it that way to Oaks. Oaks eluded one tackle, but was brought down for a short loss. Force was there to blow the play up. Force and Kowalski there. Force first, Kowalski second, very quickly. There you see it. That's what you call good secondary coverage on that type of pass, that little swing pass. If you get nobody up, the person that catches the swing pass is able to turn it up the field. That was not going to happen as both the Force and Kowalski right there. Third and short. And George, right up the middle, gets back to the line of scrimmage. Bring up a fourth down and about two on the play. I'll tell you what, Marty, second time they tried to run that ISO, but I'm going to tell you right now, you cannot, you cannot gain two yards when you have five defensive people two yards deep in the backfield is just not going to happen. So the Cougars will be forced to punt it away. Williams with the kick, taking a Cougar roll, picked up by Kowalski at the 24. He eludes one tackle, eludes another. Dane Kowalski across the 40. He's in the Cougar territory, has a couple of blockers in front of him. Kowalski spins away from Williams, and Kowalski all the way down to the Cougar 21-yard line. A return of 55 yards. I'll tell you, missed tackle, missed tackle. Good block, missed tackle, missed tackle. If you don't stop, square yourself up. A runner like Kowalski, who's a very good athlete, is able to get the ball up the field, is going to do exactly what we saw there. You have to break down on a, a punt. He did an excellent job fielding the ball, and then brings it back for big yardage. E.J. McCallum eventually brought Kowalski down. We haven't seen Kowalski the last couple of offensive possessions, but he's back in the Bulldog backfield on this first and 10 from the 21. And he'll get the carry. Looking for room up the middle. He's gonna get about three yards to the 18. I'm impressed with the uh, Hazleton area defensive front. They're doing a nice job right now. Short yardage on first down, 332. Bulldogs left with two timeouts. So there's time for them to work the clock and use the timeouts. The Hazleton area defensive front rises to the occasion on the last play. Bulldogs have entered the Grand Central Red Zone. If you're just joining us, Coach DeMelfi mentioned two timeouts left for the Bulldogs. You're able to see it 
on the Berger Family Dealership scoreboard. On the carry was ruled down Nick Talanka. Talanka ground. Of about two, I'm sorry, Joe. That's okay, ground can't cause a fumble. Talanka tripped right here. Trips, I believe, over an offensive lineman's foot. Then went down, fumbled the ball, but the ground caused the fumble. So Berwick looking at a third down. Because in high school, just like college, uh, you don't have to be forced down to be ruled down. And uh, Talanka uh, was not hit by a defender, but was down. Curry faked the pitch to Stout, keeps it himself, but the Cougar defense not fooled at all on the play. Beltrami led the charge for the Cougars. Excellent job by Beltrami. We've seen him make some real big plays. CJ makes the toss fake, tries to get to the corner, but Beltrami right there forces a fourth down. And a late penalty flag was thrown as we were looking at that replay, maybe a sideline warning against Hazel Tenaria. I see Joe Flanagan back on those sidelines, so I don't think they called it on him. No, he's still under the schooner, sooner, sooner, schooner. So a fourth down and three, and it looks like Berwick will use their second timeout, leading 6 nothing. Your family's good health begins with a great team. That team is the Alliance Medical Group. We're the first health care provider in the greater Hazleton area to offer a fully integrated approach to family and specialized medical care. Our expanding network of more than 30 physicians and specialists are trusted by thousands for routine and complex medical treatments. For a convenient appointment at any of our 15 regional offices, simply call 501-4-AMG. Alliance Medical Group. Your health. That's our specialty. After the Berwick timeout, the Bulldogs come out and they're going to line up in field goal formation. Olivia Seely is going to attempt a 31-yard field goal. Dallas Arner will be holding. If there is any win right now, Marty, it's with her if they're going to kick this. Kick is up and it is good. A minute 55 left in the opening half and the Bulldogs lead it 9-0 as we keep it here. Olivia Seely, her second field goal made on the season a new long of 31 yards here at Harmon Guys Stadium on the season for Olivia and it has the Bulldogs up 9-0 she hit that well you know what Marty they talk about the snap good snap good hold good kick and that's exactly what happened there Seeley with a 31 yarder and as I mentioned if there is any wind at this point it was be behind her so she was helped a little but not a lot 155 left, second quarter. Hazelton area down by nine. They have three timeouts. One of the things you don't want to do here is take some unnecessary risk. Um, you're within striking distance. They're playing well. They're being Hazelton area on defense. Work your offense can use your timeouts, use them. But as I said before, don't do something that you feel may confuse Berwick, but may end up confusing yourself. Well, I know I'm easily confused, so. That happened to me quite a bit. <laughs> At scoring drive, three plays, seven yards, a minute 52 off the clock. The big play, the 55-yard punt return by Dane Kowalski setting up Olivia Seeley to kick the 31-yard field goal, and she'll kick it away here. Short kick taken from the 
13 yard line. This is Basic, and Basic will be brought down out across the 35 yard line to the 37. Nick Koch on the tackle for Berwick. Koch did a great job there on that tackle because instead of going to wide field, Basic decided to go straight up the field, and Koch brings him down at about the 37 of Hazelton. Toss to Zukowski on the right side. He'll be brought down from behind by Ray Grasley. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10, clock continues to run. As we mentioned, as you see on the Burger Family Dealership scoreboard, three timeouts remaining for the Cougars. I'll tell you what, Berwick runs the ball so well on defense. It's tough to run laterally and then try to get up the field on them. Zukowski has hit a couple of good gainers right at them. This will be George. He doesn't find much up the middle. Looks like the official spot will say another run for no gain. Last minute of play in the half. Hazel Teneri will have to run another play, and you wonder, you get another stop like this, would Coach Curry use his last time out and force you to punt it away? One of the things you always think about in a situation like this is uh, they're going to run the clock down Hazel Teneri, but go ahead and use that time out. They set up in punt formation. Go, in, go with your punt rush. Don't worry as much about a penalty on it and see if you can block it and come up with a big play. Hazel Tenaria takes a timeout with 28.7 seconds left. They trail 9-0. We'll keep it here. As I mentioned, 28.7 seconds left here in the opening half. Coming up at the half, get a look at the Burger Family Dealership halftime stats. They'll be compiled once again by Jim Burns. Give away a weekender from Chef Buzz's Hole in the Wall. And what's a weekender? It is a large pizza, anti-pasto, and a dozen wings done just the way you like. Perfect to go and pick up and uh, have it on your high school football Friday or your college Saturday, as maybe those Irish fans will want to have a weekender as they watch the Irish play at home tomorrow against Navy. As Chef Buzz's Hole in the Wall does not open till 3 o'clock, so it'll be a little hard to watch Penn State at noon with a weekender, but uh, maybe to watch the Irish and we'll also give away a gift certificate to the Hollywood Diner. Third down and 10 for the Cougars, Zukowski cuts it back up the middle, loses the football! Berwick has recovered! Ian Mazonki recovered the fumble! Zukowski looking to cut it back to the middle. One of the Berwick defenders was able to get a hand on the ball and strip it from Zukowski. So we're looking at Berwick at the, with the ball. 22 seconds, up 9 nothing. And they didn't have to use that last time out. So they still have a timeout. So, well, just as I say that, last timeout being used by the Bulldogs to set up what Coach Curry wants to run here on a first and 10 from the Cougar 42. The other benefit, you get a first down in the field to play a clock will stop to move the chain, so you can still conceivably run a play in the middle of the field, get that first down and get down and spike it. Yeah, you're gonna have to go to the spike play and the spike formation if you're gonna do that, Marty. I think the important yard line right now is the one right at the pylons. Um, a touchdown area, don't give up anything with only 22 seconds left here in the first half and down by nine, you're definitely within range. You're playing pretty well, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Hazel Tenaria is playing real well. So don't give up an unnecessary or foolish touchdown. And we've seen with the limited time remaining that uh, if you're a Berwick supporter, you know, get yourself in range uh, 
If you could get yourself a, a quick uh, 25, 30 yards, you have an opportunity for another field goal uh, from Olivia Seeley. That's a possibility. Uh, she just picked up three on a 31-yarder, so that's, and again, the wind that was blown pretty heavily here in the first quarter has now died down, but it's still favoring the kicker at this point. So the ball will be marked at the 42. Mazanki and Force to the top of your screen. Arner gets it from Curry, looking downfield, and it is caught at the 18-yard line by Kowalski. Quickly, Berwick to the line. Clock stopped with 14.6 seconds left. Clock stopped with the first down. It starts now. And Curry will down it. 11 seconds left in the half. Ball marked. At the 18. We're going to go back to the double pass. Lateral. Throw down the field. Dane Kowalski, four people around him, makes the catch. Young man is, uh, as I mentioned before, a very good athlete. Uh, runs. He can catch well. He has good speed. Bulldogs, 11 seconds. No timeouts. Movement up front, and this could be a big five yards in either direction, depending what the officials call here. Good ball. Snap infraction on the offense. Good first down. Now, being a former center, I'm not going to say anything about a snap infraction, coach. Yeah, I'm a former center, and I've, <laughs> I had several of those. <laughs> So a big five yards moves it back to the Cougar 23, second and 15. And with no timeouts left, you either have to make sure you got the first down or get yourself out of bounds. Curry to throw. Looking across the middle, has a man. It's complete. Down to the two is Trenholm. 3.2 seconds left. Bulldogs hurry to the line of scrimmage. They're going to have to spike it very quickly. Clock stop, starts, Curry spikes it with one second remaining. Now we'll see what uh, Coach Curry elects to do here. Do you go for the field goal, which is essentially like an extra pointer? Do you get all, go for it from the two? Well, the, 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 a couple of things. Number one, you're up 9 nothing. A score will make it 12. I think they'll go for the field goal as, I believe... Ball officially marked at the three, so in essence, like an extra point. Hate to be at the three-yard line and not come away with points. Seeley's kick hits the goal post, no good. So the Bulldogs are denied at the half. The score here at halftime, Berwick nine, Hazelton area nothing. Coming up at the half, we'll get a look at the Berger family dealership. Halftime stats compiled by Jim Burns. We'll give away a gift certificate to the Hollywood Diner. Give away a weekender to Chef Buzz's Hole in the Wall. We'll hear from the Berwick High School Marching Band. We'll have much more from Harmon Guys Stadium. Once again, the score at the half, the Bulldogs lead it. 9-0, you're watching live high school football here on WYLN. Now, Hazel Park Spring Water is proud to announce that they are the official water of the WYLN Sports Crew and available for home delivery through JW Wargo Spring Water Delivery and JoJo's Beverage. Since 1915, the Chrysler family has been serving the area with quality meats. The tradition continues today with five generations at Hazel Park Quality Meats, 260 Washington Avenue, West Hazleton, and Reading Specialty Meats, located at 216 East 4th Street in Berwick. Here are some of this week's specials. Route 309 in Hazleton and on Route 11 in Exeter. We welcome you back to Harmon Guys Stadium on the Burger Family Dealership 
Halftime scoreboard at the half. The Bulldogs lead it 9-0 over Hazelton area. A half of big plays from Berwick. A lot of them coming from the skill level of Dane Kowalski, who had a big opening half, both on offense and special teams. As Jordan Stout had a touchdown run for the Bulldogs in the opening quarter. Olivia Seely with a field goal from 31 yards out in the second. That has the Bulldogs in front by a score of 9-0. And we are moments away from hearing from the Berwick High School Marching Band as they are getting set up on the field here at Harmon Guy Stadium. And let's head down field level. They look like they're ready, and we're going to hear from the Berwick High School Marching Band. That has been the Berwick High School Marching Band with their halftime performance. We are at the half of our regular season finale here on WYLN. The score at the half. The Bulldogs of Berwick 9, Hazel Tenaria nothing. We'll get a look at halftime stats brought to you by Burger Family Dealership. Have our last giveaways of the regular season from the Hollywood Diner and Chef Buzz's Hole in the Wall and much more from Harmon Guy Stadium. You're watching live high school football right here on WYLN.
It's Oktoberger. The sale's so big, they named a month after it. At Burger, Cadillac, Buick, GMC, in Hazleton. Hi, Jim Kennedy, Burger Family Dealerships. Experience Buick with a 2014 Buick Verano. 24-month lease for only $219 a month. Or the 2014 GMC Sierra. All new. Lease it. 36 months for only $339. It's Oktoberger at Burger, Cadillac, Buick, GMC. Just off I-81, exit 145. Route 93 in Hazleton. Drive with experience. Tri-County Business Machines has been serving the Hazleton area with office supplies and furniture for over 35 years. We are your local Kyocera dealer for all your digital Kyocera copiers, printers, and faxes. For exceptional reliability, sales, and service, the call to make is to Tri-County Business Machines. Tri-County Business Machines, keeping your office up to speed. Tri-County Business Machines, located at 117 East Broad Street, Hazleton. Phone 459-0754 or visit us on the web at tricountybm.com. This is a home. This is your neighbor's home. This is another home furnished by Grand Central. All these rooms in all these homes makes everybody so happy. It's so easy to do. It's your room made your way. It's local. It's Grand Central. This week at Grand Central, the price on the floor is the price to your door and not one cent more. No tax, no delivery, no kidding. It's now floor to door prices. Everybody shops Grand Central, making your house a home. Your home is an ever-expanding network of entertainment. TVs, computers, tablets, game systems. Maximize your experience with MetroCast VIP. Video, internet, and phone. And now, wireless home networking. Connect up to three computers, unlimited wireless devices, even your smartphone. Bring Wi-Fi home with MetroCast VIP. Home Wi-Fi and so much more with MetroCast. Your family's good health begins with a great team. That team is the Alliance Medical Group. We're the first health care provider in the greater Hazleton area to offer a fully integrated approach to family and specialized medical care. Our expanding network of more than 30 physicians and specialists are trusted by thousands for routine and complex medical treatments. For a convenient appointment at any of our 15 regional offices, simply call 501-4-AMG. Alliance Medical Group. Your health. That's our specialty. We're looking for a dealer that will take the time to get to know our needs. And hook me up with something that has some all-wheel drive and some power. Bam! And what will you be using the car for primarily? Cycling, snowboarding, kayaking, you know. Gardening, and antiquing, and commuting to work. I've got just the car. Lease a 2014 Subaru Forester 2.5 i CVT for $199 a month. The right car. The right price. The right dealer. Fairway Subaru. Yeah. We welcome you back live to Harmon Guy Stadium in Hazleton, home of the Cougars, as they trail at the half to the undefeated Berwick Bulldogs by a score of 9 0. And we are moments away from getting a look at the halftime highlights brought to you by Service Electric Wilkes Bear. And we'll start with the Bulldogs going on an 11 play, 77 yard drive, capped by Jordan Stout from two yards out. Point after was no good as the snap was mishandled, and Hazel Tenaria would recover to keep the score 6-0 Berwick with 5.39 left in the first. Moving the second quarter action, Dane Kowalski would field the punt with over three minutes remaining in the half and return it 55 yards all the way down to the Hazel Tenaria 21 before E.J. McCallum would bring him down there. And that would set up Olivia Seeley, her second made field goal of the season, and the Bulldogs were up 9-0. That one from 31 yards out, matching her number. And after a fumble recovery by the Bulldogs with 22 seconds left, the double pass Arner to Kowalski down inside the Cougar 20. And then with time winding down in the half, Curry would find Kyle Trenholm, who would get down to about the three. That would set up with one second left. Seeley's field goal attempt that would go off the goal post, no good. And at the half, the Bulldogs would lead it 9-0 over Hazel Tenaria. And we'll get a look at the halftime stats compiled by our very own Jim Burns and brought to you by Burger Family Dealerships. Marty, the Bulldogs with eight first down, 72 yards rushing, 69 passing, 141 total. No turnovers, two penalties for 10 yards. 
The Cougars, three first downs, 42 yards rushing, 13 passing, 55 total yards. Berwick's defense doing a commendable job there in the first half. One turnover for Hazleton area, no penalties. Relatively penalty-free game. Offensively, neither team lighting it up, but the Bulldogs are up by nine. Those were the Berger Family Dealership halftime stats compiled by Jim Burns. For the final time this regular season, time to give away a couple of items. We'll start with the Hollywood Diner, located on the Airport Road, our Airport Beltway in Hazel Township. All through the year, we've asked you to stop by and register, and we might be calling your name just like from for tonight from Berwick. John Parker, congratulations. You've won a gift certificate from the Hollywood Diner. I'm finally going to be able to go to the Hollywood Diner. That I, All I have to do is walk across the alley and see him. If John, if just remember, you got to take Coach DeMelfi with you using your gift certificate. Unfortunately, I've seen Coach eat. You may not have much left after that. We now move to Chef Buzz's Hole in the Wall, formerly the Red Buzzard. We told you to register each week for a delicious weekender, and a weekender is a pizza and I pasto along with a dozen wings done just the way you like. And our final winner of this regular season, Sharon Zuba from Plymouth. So congratulations to Sharon. She won a weekender from Chef Buzz's Hole in the Wall. We think John Parker from Berwick won a Hollywood Diner gift certificate if it does not end up in Coach DeMelfi's mailbox first. Congratulations and thank you to everyone at home for registering uh, all season long. And thank you to the Hollywood Diner and Chef Buzz's Hole in the Wall for those giveaways all season. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, John Parker is going to be expecting a visit from you, Coach. I'm sure he will be, um, whether he wants it or not. <laughs> I think one of the things Marty looked for the second half, see if they, uh, either offense can uh, pick up with a little bit of a spark. Uh, Kowalski's done a nice job giving Burke a little spark there in the first half, but uh, Hazleton area needs to pick it up offensively. We'll talk more about that third quarter and have a little bit more before third quarter action starts at the half. The Bulldogs lead it 9-0. It's Oktoberger. The sale's so big, they named a month after it. And have I got some red-hot deals from you. This brand-new Dodge Dart. Buy it for $18.7 or lease it for only $239. I also have a 1500 Dodge Ram Express, brand new quad cab 4x4, buy it for $31.9 or lease it for $349. And the Dodge Grand Caravan, buy it for $19.9 or lease it for $239. It's Oktoberger at Burger Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, Route 93, Hazleton. As a diabetic, where do I turn for the special health care products and advice I need? Come into your nearby Good Neighbor Pharmacy. We specialize in the unique concerns and needs you have as a diabetic patient. Your Good Neighbor Pharmacist has a fully trained staff, stocks a broad selection of the products you need, and takes a personal interest in your health and well-being. What do you see? Perhaps you're noticing the rusted fender or the dented side panel. Maybe the first thing your eye goes to is the worn interior. But look closer and you'll see something else. Value. At Harry's You Pull It, we see value in your old car and so will others. It's the reason we offer top dollar for your car. Junker, clunker, piece of tin, your car may have many names, but at Harry's, there's only one that matters. Value. Visit one of our three locations today in Hazleton, Pennsburg, and Allentown. So best cause I hear there's no mistake You can't buy better You can't buy better than Barber Ford Barber Ford, Route 309 in Hazleton and on Route 11 in Exeter 
We welcome you back on the Burger Family Dealership Halftime Scoreboard at the half. The Bulldogs lead it 9-0. Both teams just about set to return to the field here at Harmon Guy Stadium. I'm Marty Burns joined by Joe DeMelfi, Joe Flanagan on the sidelines, Jim Burns on the stats, and uh, Joe, the Bulldogs are going to get the ball to start this third quarter, and uh, what would you expect is uh, some halftime adjustments from uh, Berwick? I, I think they've rushed the ball okay. They've got the ball up the field. They've used Jordan Stout in short yardage. Um, maybe go a little bit more to Kowalski. I think there are certain players that need to have as many touches as possible during a game. I think Kowalski's one of those players. They only went to force once. Big pass play at the two-yard line. He stepped out. So I look for them to do a combination with Kowalski rushing and receiving and force. Uh, Hazel Tenary just has to pick it up offensively, give their give their defense a boost here. Right, and I was just going to mention that, you know, they got to start getting some time of possession to their advantage because eventually you've got to figure this Hazel Tenary defense will wear down if they have to keep playing out there defensively. Yeah, Berg's had the ball. They had seven in, in minutes in the first quarter. They had about six or seven in the second. So majority of minutes are Berg's right now. And you're right, it wears down a defense. And for Hazel Tenary, the big thing, uh, Zach Zukoski, only uh, under 40 yards being held to in that opening half. Uh, they're going to look to try to get him going or at least try to get something off of, uh, you know, faking it to him and get something going offensively. I think one of the things with Zukowski, he picked up some good yardage on a couple plays, in, but you need to feed on that. You need to build on that. They run the ball better uh, north and south than, than, than they do uh, sideline to sideline, east to west. So see if the... Cougars can get that north-south running game going. As you can see, both teams have made it back out onto the field. We're uh, moments away from starting that third quarter, and uh, we saw Coach Curry in the pregame wearing that nice dress shirt, the blue Berwick dress shirt, gone to a very sharp-looking uh, hooded sweatshirt. Yes, I think uh, GQ is going to call. <laughs> have him on the runway next week, yes. huh? Yes, New York. <laughs> We're just about set for the start of the third quarter. Is there you get a look at Coach Curry in that sharp-looking hooded sweatshirt with Berwick football on the front. As he checks over his notes. And how about the last two weeks? The veteran coaches that Hazel Tenaria has faced for Coach Drumheller. And Ed Christian, 33rd year, Coach Curry in his 44th season of coaching football. Two veteran coaches that uh, have been teaching a lot of uh, youngsters through the years. Well, I think the other thing you look at is 400 and some wins. Coach Curry, 200 and 243 for Coach Christian. So Coach Drumheller is looking the last two weeks at over 600 wins between two coaches. That's pretty, pretty impressive. As we mentioned, the Bulldogs will get the ball to start this third quarter. Tristan Williams will kick it away as the Cougars will be going from right to left on your screen. I think one of the things, Marty, is that um, Hazelton area, you don't want to say that a stop is a must here, but I don't know that they can give up six or seven points here the way their offense is struggling. So defense needs to come out, work hard to make a big play for themselves. Trenholm and Kowalski back deep awaiting the Williams kick. Taken at the 11 by Trenholm. He is across the 20. He's across the 30. Breaking a tackle down the sideline. Flag is down as Trenholm takes out an official on the sideline at the 40 of Hazel Tenaria, but a flag back at the Berwick well, 39. There are two flags, one for a hold, the other for, to be very frank with you, stupidity because I think it's a personal foul um, swing taken by one of the Hazleton players, but let's see how they flesh all of this out. As you say, a hold against the offense, dead ball personal foul against the kicking team. So Jay Rowan will sort this out. Woo! 
10 yard penalty back to the 29. That's the hold against the receiving team. Now they're going to mark off the 15 from the personal foul against the kicking team. Get a look at Trenholm on the return. Here you're going to see it. He bounces right. And right there, there, right there the hold is going to be called as Trenholm tight ropes the sideline. But Berwick will put it in play at the 44-yard line, their own. Now the officials uh, still conversing to make sure they got this well, spotted I think, correctly. I, I think there might be some conversation about what, what about the personal foul. Is it one that warrants ejection? Or maybe Coach Drumheller had a question about that. I'm not sure. Play will resume now, though. Did not see any signal of a ejection. So Stout the lone back behind Curry from the 44. Stout will get about three yards to the 47 and a late flag thrown into the pile. Either a face mask or a hold. Let's see what uh, they come up with. And you were right, Joe, a face mask against the defense. Anytime you have seven or eight defenders grabbing in there, Marty, uh, to, to, to make a tackle, it's, there's always the risk of a face mask here you see it again pretty good, a good push by the offensive line stout is a pile driver and actually you see it there uh, not against the ball carrier almost a hands to the face face mask penalty it was on a, one of the linemen right exactly one of the defensive linemen had latched on to one of Berwick's offensive linemen and that was the face mask call not on the ball carrier We're going to have a measurement. It looks to me like it's a, it's a first down, but. It was a five-yard face mask penalty. So they'll bring out the chains to measure. And as Jim Burns pointed out, using his high-powered cheaters, just shy, so inches for a first down. In that opening half, Dane Kowalski, six carries, 57 yards. Jordan Stata, three carries, nine yards, and the touchdown. C.J. Curry was four of seven, passing for 45 yards. Dallas Arner, one of one for 24. Trenholm had three receptions for 39 yards. Kowalski, one for 24. Klinger punted twice at a 50-yard average, and Kowalski with that punt return for 55 yards. That Cougar defense recorded three sacks of C.J. Curry in that opening half. And this will be Stout. He's got a first down and more inside the 40 to the 36. Good for a Harry's, you pull it. First down. We saw that play a couple of times in the first half. He'll run it in the second. Again, good kick out block, and then Vandermark leads up. Picks up a first down for the Bulldogs. Nose of the football on the Cougar, 35, first and 10. Stout remains the lone back behind Curry, but Curry keeps. Curry has got a first down and more. Curry pushed out of bounds near the 20. Good for another. Harry's, you pull it first down. Another late flag thrown down by referee Jay Rowan. We could have a hold on the corner. And one of the things, Marty, we keep saying this when this play is running, it takes a while for the ball. Okay, right here is the fake. Right there. And they called it. On the last man on the line of scrimmage, called for a hold. If you don't see separation between the blocker and the defender, you're probably going to get a hold. It'll make it a first and 15. Spot foul brings it back to the 40. 
Again, on that play, Hazelton needs to recognize there's no option, man. They need to get run support up on Curry quickly. Curry, pass, complete to Trenholm. Will be knocked out of bounds at about the 31, a gain of nine. I'll tell you what, nine yards is too much. It's a short side of the field. you got to pinch that. If you're a defensive back, you got to get a little tighter. You have the sideline to help you. You have help in the middle of the field. If you're playing a zone, you're going to have to get up a little closer, put some pressure on that receiver. You just can't give up a, a nine-yard first, uh, first down pass. Curry pumps, looking to the end zone, flag is down. Yeah, they caught him on the uh, on the bump. He was going to pump and go. Receiver did a turn, was going up the field, was interfered with by the defensive back. Both officials made the throw. Here it is. Curry makes that shoulder fake. Receiver had done the stop and then turned to go up. And the defensive back interfered with the route. So the pass interference, pass interference against the defense. First down. We'll mark it at the 17. So the Bulldogs. Get a Harry's you pull it first down on the penalty and are in the Grand Central Red Zone with a first and 10 from the Cougars 17. Stout is going to be brought down after a gain of about one. Glenn Zukoski brought him down at the shoe tops. That's that um, kick out lead up with the other offensive back. That time, Zukowski got a hand in there right here. You're going to see it to bring him down. Zukowski came from what looked like the backside, so he sifted through the backside of the Burrock offensive line to make that tackle. This is Stout. Oh, excuse me. Instead of Stout, it was Nick Talanka. Yeah, Talanka with a good job off that right side. Got excellent blocking, good push. We'll take another look at that. Again, that Berwick offensive line moving defenders down the field. Hazelton had a man outside. Couldn't get there quick enough. For the Bulldogs, first and goal, seven-yard line as Talanka picks up good yardage off of good blocking. Picked up the Harry's, you pull it first down. He's going to look for a touchdown. Stumbled. Gets inside the five, brought down at the one. Second and goal from the one. I'll tell you, the reason that uh, we had the stumble here, here you see it again. He was he stumbled on the turf there. Um, Talanka was, Nick Talanka was trying to decide whether to take it up inside behind his blockers or go outside. Foot caught the turf. But we're looking at second down and goal from the three-yard line. Stout to the end zone. Touchdown, Berwick. Yeah, Berwick just bulldozed into the end zone again. Stout, that short yardage rusher. Good size. Good push by the offensive line. There you see it. Vandermark was there, as well as Ian Mazanki, a 6'1", 215-pound senior. So the Bulldogs getting good blocking up front from with that it, offensive line. With it 15-0, the Bulldogs go for two. Stout is in for two, but a flag was thrown. We'll check the flag. going to be a hold, I believe. They're going to move it back and... Let's see if uh, the Bulldogs decide to go ahead and kick it.
we talked about Hazelton oh, having come up with a defensive stop. Repeat the try. It didn't do that. They're down by 15. It looks like Olivia Seeley has trotted out on the field. But they are no means out of the ball game, Marty. They just have to get a little spark going offensively. Their defense has performed fairly well as Seeley lines up to kick a long extra point. And flags will stop it. Looked like the kick was good. But uh, before the play. We have some movement. Dead ball, false start on the offense. So the false start will move the Berwick kicking team five yards back. Makes the extra point. So Seeley, in essence, will be trying from what would be a 35-yard field goal. This is the extra point. Hold is down. Kick was blocked. Basic came through to block it. So the point after no good. 8.47 left in the third. The Bulldogs now lead it 15 nothing. What you sleep on can change your life. It affects how you feel, your relationships, how you perform. Let the folks at Grand Central custom fit the right sleeping surface just for you. Get free interest for 36 months, free delivery, free removal, free bed frame, plus a free furniture gift card on Sealy Posturepedric Hybrids and Optimum Bedding. Be custom fit. Get lots of freebies. Everybody shops Grand Central. Shouldn't you? We're looking for a dealer that will take the time to get to know our needs. And hook me up with something that has some all-wheel drive and some power. Bam! And what will you be using the car for primarily? Cycling, snowboarding, kayaking, you know. Gardening, and antiquing, and commuting to work. I've got just the car. Lease a 2014 Subaru Forester 2.5i CVT for $199 a month. The right car. The right price. The right dealer. Fairway Subaru. Yeah. Berwick takes the third quarter kickoff, goes eight plays, 56 yards, 313 off the clock. Stout carried four times for 18 yards, including the one-yard touchdown run, his second of the night. Point after was no good, making it 15 nothing. This is Oaks. Oaks returning the kickoff all the way back to the Cougar 45-yard line. Hazelton area now, that directional kick they're taking gets straight up the field instead of trying to go sideline to sideline. The last two times, very effective returns as we talked about here you see it oaks decides to take a right up finds that little bit of an alley first and 10 from the 45 zukowski met immediately in the backfield for a loss stout on the tackle Zukowski in that opening half had 13 carries, 36 yards. Heller, three of four passing for 13 yards. Two completions to Oaks for 15 yards. Williams punted four times for a 32.8 yard average. On third down, Berwick was four of seven. The Cougars 0 for five. Bulldogs with the time of possession advantage, 12.37 to 11.23. Total plays in that opening half, 29 to 20 for the Bulldogs. Play action, Heller throws he was under pressure there's the flag as he had George set up for the screen and then I guess George left the area so I believe we're going to get an intentional grounding called by Jay Rowan the screen didn't work because the pressure was so quick Heller was looking for George nothing there because George then took off but the other part of it is Marty if we go back to the first quarter the first play, here you're going to see this play now. Quick, very quick pressure. Tanner Weaver, one of the linebackers, up the field very quickly. But if we go back to the first quarter, the first play that Hazelton threw, a little slant ball, picked up good yardage. Berwick tightened up their coverage a little bit, but you still can't get away from the intermediate game. If you do, it puts too much pressure on your running game, which is happening right now. Heller... Being pressured, throwing downfield for Oaks. 
incomplete. Max Thomas on the coverage, forcing the three and out in the Cougar punt. Oaks running a vertical straight up the field. Heller under throwing just a little bit. Looks like he might have had a play there. So we're looking at a fourth down for the Cougars. And another tough thing for this Hazel Tenary offense, we haven't seen Gavin Kopchinski since that opening quarter. Uh, he's on the sideline. They took his pads off. Uh, currently now wearing a jacket on the sideline. So I would suspect his night is over as uh, several players have con come over and uh, shook his hand. So uh, probably an injury for Gavin. And uh, what a tough way for you to end your senior season as Williams punt goes out of bounds. It looks like it'll be marked. Marty, he, he caught it on the side of his foot. It's gonna be marked at the 40 or the 33 yard line. Berwick with an extremely short field here. And we talked about mistakes being made, kicking game and um, one right there, a very short kick enables the Bulldogs to start their offense. We got official word from Joe Flanagan on the sidelines. Uh, Gavin Kopchinski has been ruled out for the remainder of the game and uh, feel bad for that senior. A tough way to, to end your senior season, uh, having to leave due to injury. As uh, first down, a run inside the 30 for gain of about six by Stout. What, what's happening now is exactly what we talked about. Defense wearing down a little bit. Been on the field a lot for Hazelton area. Berwick's offensive line has been effective. And um, now the Bulldogs looking to run the ball, maybe go to a little play action when the secondary starts trying to come up and help that defensive front for the Cougars. Second down and four from the 27. Stout again on the carry. Stout inside the 20 to the 19. Good for a Harry's you pull it first down. As also the Bulldogs enter the Grand Central red zone with a first and 10 at the 19. Bulldogs, uh, no need to hurry. Seven minutes left, third quarter up by 15 and moving the ball very effectively on the ground right now. Mazonki in motion to the top of your screen. This will be Curry following Mazonki to the top sideline. Curry will be pushed out of bounds inside the 10. Good for another Harry's you pull it. Berwick first down. I tell you what, Ian Mazanki had a great block on the corner. He pushed, forced the defensive man down the field, and we might get a chance right here. You're going to see it as Mazanki pushes and pushes and pushes and opens the way for Curry to pick up a first down, and it looks like the Bulldogs are starting to dominate big time at the line of scrimmage. Stout stays on his feet all the way to the end zone from six yards out. Touchdown, Berwick, and a late flag was thrown. Now we're going to, now you get, uh, Marty, the uh, people, you know, as we talked about the rivalry, it start going back and forth, and obviously the, uh, that was against the Bulldogs, but. I'm sure it's, uh, I didn't see any kind of uh, taunting, but I'm sure things are being said down there and the, the officials are trying to nip it real quick. Yeah, I, and I think that's a smart thing to do rather than let... Dead ball, unsportsmanlike, against the offense. Good touchdown on the kickoff, 15 yards. I think so one Lundstrom of the, Heller wants to take it on the kickoff. I think one of the things you look at is, as a coach, you don't want to see that type of penalty anytime. I mean, obviously, you're going to go up here by 20 some points um, but you don't want to see your team penalized because of a uh, basically a, a dumb penalty Sealy on for the point after kick is up and it is good 
6.27 left in the third. The Bulldogs now lead it 22 nothing. Luncheonette, still making memories after all these years. Tennyson's Incorporated Machine Shop in Hazleton and Whitehaven. They specialize in automotive, industrial, and small engine parts. If you want reliability and quality, go to Tennyson's. Call them at 570-455-7761 or in Whitehaven, 570-443-9513. Berwick takes the short field, goes four plays and 33 yards stout. Another three carries, 20 yards as he goes from six yards out. His third rushing touchdown of the night gives him seven on the season. And the Bulldogs lead it 22-0 after the point after was good by Olivia Seely. And after the unsportsmanlike conduct, Seely will be kicking off from her 25-yard line. Short kick that's going to go out of bounds. So we'll see what Coach Drumheller will elect to do here. I, I think in this case, you're down by 22. You want the ball. I mean, your field position is going to be 35-yard line. So, Actually, it looks like they're going to put it at midfield. And uh, while we have a moment with some special guests, let's head down to field level and Joe Flanagan. Hey, Marty, thank you. I'm down here with some of the seniors from Hazleton area, some cheerleaders and some band members. Introduce yourself, guys. Uh, hi, I'm Michelle Carleon. Daniel Sanoski. And I'm Shauna Belisco. So, what's your favorite thing about being at a, a Friday night football game? Um, the best thing about being at a Friday night football game is watching the boys out there doing their best and seeing all the fans cheer them on. Hey, drum major, what do you think? Best thing being in the band on a Friday night? I think the best part about being in the band on a Friday night is the atmosphere of everything that's going on around you, from the fans to the game, the cheerleaders, the sideline, all the action just makes an atmosphere that's uncomparable to anything else. What's it mean to you to be your last time cheering at Herman Guy Stadium? I've been cheering Friday Night Footballs for years now, and watching the boys just do their best and hearing the fans, like, it's heartbreaking, but it's, it's great to watch them. Well, guys, congratulations. Last game, senior night. Enjoy it. Back upstairs to you, Marty and Joe. Thanks a lot, Joe, and uh, I'm sure a lot of those emotions running high for a lot of these seniors at Hazleton Area High School as uh, hoping for a Cougar comeback here, but uh, second and 11, Heller hit! Brought down by Mazanki on the sack. Uh, Ray Grasley recovered the fumble. I'll be honest with you, Marty, uh, Mazanki with a great sack, but I don't know what happened to the blocking assignments, but somebody missed it. Mazanki just a little late off the corner, and I think that was a problem for the offensive line. Instead of transferring men on that line of scrimmage, Bazanki came a little late, was missed by the offensive line, caused the fumble. Nice sack by Mazanki causing the fumble. The Bulldogs take over. They'll take it at the Cougar 42 play action. Curry deep down the middle. Got a man. It's Vandermark. Touchdown, Berwick. C.J. Curry, number one, play action, number two, plenty of time to throw it. He stepped up in and lofted that thing. Here you see it, good blocking by the Bulldog line. Vandermark. How about this, Joe? A.J. Vandermark on the year, two receptions, 80 yards, two Berwick touchdowns. I think one of the things Vandermark does is he, he's able to sneak out of the backfield when they line up in that type of uh, offensive set as Olivia Seeley, a good extra point. 5.36 left in the third. The Bulldogs now lead it by 29. It's Oktoberger. The sale's so big, they named a month after it. 
at Burger Mazda in Hazleton. Hi, Jerry here, Burger Mazda Hazleton. It's Oktoberger. We've got a great deal for you. 2013 Mazda 3s starting at just $15,495. It's brand new. Or sign and drive $159 a month. You can't beat that deal. Test drive a Mazda today. It's Oktoberger at Burger Mazda, just off I-81, exit 145, Route 93, Hazleton. Tri-County Business Machines has been serving the Hazleton area with office supplies and furniture for over 35 years. We are your local Kia Sarah dealer for all your digital Kia Sarah copiers, printers, and faxes. For exceptional reliability, sales, and service, the call to make is to Tri-County Business Machines. Tri-County Business Machines, keeping your office up to speed. Tri-County Business Machines, located at 117 East Broad Street, Hazleton. For on 459-0754 or visit us on the web at tricountybm.com. We welcome you back to Harmon Guy Stadium. A big third quarter. Three touchdowns in the last three minutes and 11 seconds for the Bulldogs has pushed their lead to 29 nothing as Zukoski We'll bring it back to the 38-yard line of Hazelton area. We'd like to remind you, high school football on WYLN is brought to you by Valley Pets. Why pay big box pricing when you can have quality and affordability at your neighborhood pet supply store? Valley Pets, on October 26th, they celebrated their fifth anniversary. And by Northeast Gold and Silver Exchange inside the Churchill Mall. They're now paying the highest prices for your gold and silver. Unwanted, broken, or new, call them at 570-497-4177. So the Cougars now down 29-0 on first and 10. Have Heller out of the gun. Quick snap throw to Zukoski. He'll be brought down by Stout at the 45 after a gain of 7. Again, the short ball right here. Heller stands in there, makes a good throw away from the defender. Second down for Hazelton area. Want to remind you, coming up at the end of tonight's game, Joe and I will select a fairway Subaru player of the game. Four receivers set. Oaks in motion to the bottom of your screen. Handoff. Is to George. George into Berwick territory before he is brought down by Dane Kowalski inside the 30. Good for Harry's. You pull it first down. I think I, I always believe that if you can throw a short pass, it gives the defense something else. Nice job on the blocking up front. Gives the defense some, some team something else to think about, and uh, you can you can then go from there and. Hazelton comes out with uh, a nice short throw on first down. Pitsikowski quickly up the middle. First and 10 from the 28. Try to screen to Zukoski. Not fold was Alex Klinger. Great play defensively by Klinger, bringing a loss of about six. Yeah, we talk about ball recognition. Klinger does a great job here recognizing screen, getting away from the blocker on the offensive line and making the tackle. Four minutes remaining in the third quarter on the Berger Family Dealership third quarter scoreboard. Cougars trying to get on the board, trailing 29-0. Heller to pass, throws through the hands of Ward, incomplete. Kowalski was on the coverage. Ward ran the route in front of Kowalski. Heller made a decent throw, just couldn't hang on. So we're looking at third down for Hazelton area. I would figure you're down 29. This is a third and 16. You don't have to get it all back in this play, figuring that this is four down territory. Exactly. You could pick up eight or nine here and then you'd like to have more, but if that's what you could do, then work on the rest on the fourth down. Coach Drumheller and Hazel Tenaria take their first time out. They trail 29-0. And we'll keep it here. Well, we have a moment, want to thank the third base luncheonette for supplying our crew meal. 
this season and for so many seasons here on WYLN, the third base luncheonette, located at the rear of 704 Carson Street next to the old Hazleton High School known as the Castle. And for the last time this regular season, the greatest testimonial on television, Joe DeMelfi, what do you got to say about a third base hoagie? Nobody. I mean, nobody beats a third base hoagie. Ladies and gentlemen, if you could see Coach DeMelfi, he almost put a hole in this table. He believes so much in the third base luncheon at Hoagie. And once again, thank you to all the fine folks at the third base luncheon. I'll have to tell you, Marty, between that third base Hoagie I had and a halftime treat of eggs and pepper sandwich, my good friend Steve slipped the Pippa, I'm full. We'd like to thank everybody watching tonight on Metrocast Communications, especially those in the Berwick area as the third down pass is incomplete. Wasn't there a time when a DePippa played for Berwick and uh, you Se had some things to say about uh, Mr. DePippa? Several. I talked about um, a relative of his, but he called me today and said, don't talk about me, so I'm not saying anything. So um, he bribed you with the pepper and egg? No, this was a different. Oh, different. There, okay. there are several. Uh, I got you. Many of them have played for the Berwick Bulldogs. I'll, but, I'll uh, catch up eventually. You're going to have to do a uh, study. Yes. Genealogy, I, is it called? Something to that effect. Yeah, or, or something uh, I'm sure Coach Curry is, has coached a lot of the uh, yes. generations as well. No doubt. Fourth down and 16. Heller going down the sideline, incomplete. He was looking for the senior Justice Agramonte. I'll tell you what, I haven't, Agramonte got turned around. The ball was in the air, and uh, he couldn't find it. We see Heller with the throw, pretty good protection. Ball's up, and he just could not find the football. And the Bulldogs will take over. 338 left, third quarter. It'll be a first and 10 from their own 34. Curry to pass and incomplete. Pass was intended for Trayvon Simmons. And I also noticed, Coach, uh, even though it's November 1st, yesterday, Halloween, you even got a uh, trick-or-treat care package as well. Yes, um, Mrs. Burns, who always has treated me very well with the candy, and um, I appreciate it very much. It, is it going to make it to Berwick before you get home? I don't know. <laughs> they might find a lot of wrappers over, <laughs> over their mountain. <laughs> the second down pass to Trenholm, good for Harry's. You pull it first down, out to the Bulldog 45. Berwick working on that short passing game now, Marty. We keep talking about that with the, both offenses, but the Bulldogs now looking forward, 29, up by 29, 321 clock running, and um, looking for that first round of the playoffs. Curry, another quick drop pass, again complete to Trenholm, who Deep. slides down inside Cougar territory to the 46. Defensive back, again, has to press that route. You got the sideline. Middle of the field, you have help. You got to get up in the receiver's face. You can't give him nine yards on first down without some problems off the line of scrimmage. Six receptions now for Trent Home for 67 yards. Brings up a second and one. Stout back in the game in the backfield behind Curry. And this is Stout. He's got the first down and more inside the 40 to the 39. Good for Harry's. You pull it, Berwick, first down. Push, push. Great job. Again, Stirley, Beckley, Ginger, Pierce, Perla, Woodishick. All doing. Vandermark is blocked well. Mazanki is blocked well. Curry to pass, now he's rolling, being pressured by Oliver. Gets away from Oliver, but can't get away from the next line of defense as Benet and Castillo brought him down. 
Good job defensively by Benet and Castile as Oliver gives chase. Looked like Curry sprinting toward Andrew Force. Didn't have time to try to throw it down the field. And I'll tell you what, Joe, uh, for as much as Coach Curry doesn't want to admit that the dogs are deep, they've utilized a lot of players tonight. Oh, and uh, I got to think whoever's preparing for them next week has got to be very concerned with their yeah, balance. Yeah, he uses a lot of formations, a lot of different personnel. Right. Uh, Berwick's always been very well coached under Curry. Does a nice job. Wiegand gets the reception. He's out of bounds inside the 25. Good for another Harry's you pull it. First down. You know, defensively, there are a couple of things. Number one, you could sit in a vanilla defense. By vanilla, I mean four-man front, four linebackers, three deep and try to defense him, but he throws so many formations at you that you have to try to adjust with him, and it's difficult to do. Many times you can't find a formation. Many times you can't find the ball. Um, again, runs a, a, a offense that's deceptive, and the defense has to be ready for it. Then hopefully they get a couple breaks along the way. Stout. Found something on that left side. He gets about nine on the plate of the 15 as the Bulldogs once again enter the Grand Central Red Zone. You know, it doesn't hurt that your offensive line is given a great push and you have a back like Stout and Kowalski. So Berwick is, uh, I think, set for the playoffs, and they're, they're, uh, they're going to be formidable. There's no doubt about it. Uh, I think the other impressive thing tonight, Joe, uh, Dane Kowalski, leading rusher, hasn't taken a pounding tonight, uh, very limited in his action. Stout has uh, carried the load tonight from the ground. And this is Stout again, first down and more. Stout pulling his way, still on his feet. Brought down inside the five to the four, another. Harry's you pull it, Berwick, first down. I'm going to tell you what, watch the block right there by Vandermark. Tell you what, you've said that name a lot tonight, yeah, A.J. A, Vandermark. He and Mazanki have done a great job, I'll be honest with you. Uh, blocking, leading up in. Jordan Stout, it's tough, tough enough to bring down. Then when you have uh, a good blocking group in front of him, makes it even tougher. First and goal, Stout. And they're going to roll him down, shy of the goal line at the one. The clock is going to run out. We're through three quarters here at Arming Ice Stadium. The score, Berwick 29, Hazel Tenere nothing. Fourth quarter action, up next. Award-winning children's recording artist Laurie Berkner will bring her music to Hazleton when the Laurie Berkner Band performs at the Wiltsey Center at the Historic Castle on Saturday, November 23rd at 2 p.m. Doors open at 12.30. Tickets may be purchased through WiltseyCenter.org or at Ticketmaster retail outlets including select Boscoffs and Walmart locations. The Laurie Berkner Band, November 23rd at the Wiltsey Center at the Historic Castle. Schumacher Engineering Incorporated, providing diversified consulting engineering services throughout the Northeast for over 30 years. Call 455-9407 for Schumacher Engineering Incorporated. We welcome you back on the Burger Family Dealership Scoreboard. Start of the fourth quarter, the Bulldogs one quarter away from finishing the regular season, a perfect 10-0, leading it 29-0. And this balance of this Berwick team on both sides of the football has been very impressive uh, in watching them tonight. Yeah, the first time we've had them, and uh, they are impressive. They block, they run, uh, cover the field defensively. They do a very nice job. Um, as I said, they're looking for the second season, which yes. will start next week. And looking to get at least two home games at Crispin Field if everything goes well, is Stout for the fourth time tonight. Touchdown, Berwick. Jordan Stout, 6-1, as I said earlier, 230, right side. I don't know if he was touched. There you see Mazanki and Vandermark blocking and Stout along with the right side of that line, Pierce. 
Perla. Sealy on for the point after. Hold is down, the kick is up, and it is good. 11.58 left in the fourth, and the Bulldogs lead it 36-0. What do you see? Perhaps you're noticing the rusted fender or the dented side panel. Maybe the first thing your eye goes to is the worn interior. But look closer and you'll see something else. Value. At Harry's You Pull It, we see value in your old car and so will others. It's the reason we offer top dollar for your car. Junker, clunker, piece of tin, your car may have many names, but at Harry's, there's only one that matters. Value. Visit one of our three locations today in Hazleton, Pennsburg, and Allentown. As a diabetic, where do I turn for the special health care products and advice I need? Come into your nearby Good Neighbor Pharmacy. We specialize in the unique concerns and needs you have as a diabetic patient. Your Good Neighbor Pharmacist has a fully trained staff, stocks a broad selection of the products you need, and takes a personal interest in your health and well-being. We welcome you back to Harmon Guy Stadium. The Bulldogs, 11:58 away from finishing the regular season. A perfect 10-0 leading 36-0 over Hazelton area. Olivia Seely to kick it away. Another short kick. And it's going to go out of bounds. Marty, the last kick that went out of bounds, they moved to midfield because of the penalty. Uh, I forgot to mention that, and I here they'll put it at the 35 as it rolls out of bounds. Hazelton area will start their offense. Bulldogs go 10 plays, 66 yards, 340 off the clock. Stout another workhorse on that drive. Five carries, 31 yards. Gets his fourth rushing touchdown from one yard out. And the Bulldogs lead at 36 0. Ball marked at the 35, a first and 10. And this Berwick defense, Joe, the impressive thing, they've gotten a big push up front, so you really can't do much in the middle. You try to go outside, and they got the speed to track you down. Well, I tell you what, after this play, we'll talk a little bit about that. One of the things the defensive front does well is take up blockers. It takes two men to block one man. And that frees up the linebackers to get to the ball. And that's exactly what's happening. You have some defensive people up front. We're looking at third quarter stats, Marty. A big third quarter for the Bulldogs. Outrushing Hazelton area 98 to 28. 85 passing yards to one, leading to a 159 to 29 advantage in total yardage. 21 to 11 in total plays, and the Bulldogs had the ball for eight minutes and 19 seconds of that third quarter. Play action, Heller across the middle, has a man open. That's Glenn Zukoski into Berwick territory at the 43. Good for a Harry's, you pull it. First down. Good route, cleared the line of scrim. Glenn Zukowski cleared the line of scrimmage right here. They're Berwick is in that uh, zone type defense. Nobody underneath. Nice throw by Heller. Zukowski picks up the first down. Ball marked at the 43, first and 10. Give us to George, and George hit immediately, brought down for a loss by Zach Andrus. Yeah, Zach Andrus up the field. Anytime you try to run it, there you see it. Zach Andrus. Sat and waited up the field, make the tackle. Now, Joe, for Hazelton area, uh, not the way you wanted this season to come to an end. Uh, come away, it looks like a 3-7 and seven record, but we've seen improvement in this squad, and uh, Coach Drumheller is going to say goodbye to a lot of seniors, but uh, just like this young man, Zach Zukoski, who's brought down for a loss by Klinger, he's going to be back. Ryan Heller is going to be back. I'll tell you what, I, I, they definitely have improved. They've, they've gotten better. Heller has definitely gotten better. He's run a pretty good offense, throws the ball well. You have to take advantage of that. And when I talk, uh, you know, speaking of Berwick now, when I talk about run support, Alex Klinger just gave you a lesson in run support. 
but you're right, Marty. I think that there's definitely something to work with. Um, you work with those offensive linemen, defensive linemen in the weight room off, off season. Just get the playoff, and Andrus is going to sack Heller back into Cougar territory. I'll tell you what, when you look at Berwick, Zach Andrus, a junior, getting some playing time. We talk about this all the time. Played a little, uh, now is, is getting some playing time up the field very quickly and makes the sack. So the ball will be back at the 48 of Hazel Tenaria, making it fourth and 19. Cougars need to go to the Berwick 33 for a first down. Heller will go out of the gun. Zukowski to his left. Here come the Bulldogs pressure. Heller's pass complete to Oaks. Oaks inside the 40 brought down at the 39. Shy of the first down. There, there's a good example of Heller and he did well there. He made a nice throw under a lot of pressure. He hung in there and made the throw. It was a completion. It's not enough for the first down, but I'll tell you what. If I'm evaluating film for next year and I look at that, I see something to work with. As you see the clock running on the Burger Family Dealership scoreboard as this game has entered the mercy rule. Curry to pass, complete to Simmons, out to midfield. Good for a Harry's you pull it first down as Beelan with the tackle. Javon Simmons, a junior, short route. C.J. Curry makes the throw and the Bulldogs have the first. Stout on the carry. Stout still on his feet. Pulling his way near the 30. Good for a Harry's you pull it first down. I'd like to go back when they cut that film up and look at this play that Berwick has run maybe eight, maybe ten times, and I'd like to see what the average gain is on that play. It must be 15 to 18 yards, if not more. Ball marked first and ten at the Cougar 30. Tops play to Daquan Hellenthal, a sophomore. Hellenthal inside the 25 to the 23. Oaks came up, made a nice tackle on that play. As the clock under seven minutes. Berwick looking to a home game for the first playoff game. Hellenthal tosses this time to the right side. Gets inside the 20. Good for Harry's. You pull it first down. Hellenthal, sophomore, getting that playing time we always talk about. Younger players practice, they may play in JV games, but getting that varsity experience, very important. Helen Fall cuts it up the middle, Helen Fall into the end zone. Touchdown, Berwick. Hey, what happened there, that right to left motion as Helen Thal takes it into the end zone. All of a sudden, things to start to spread out here, and he's able to make the cut back, no backside pursuit. His fourth rushing touchdown of the season. And Sealy on for the point after. Game now, uh, I mean, obviously completely out of hand for Hazel Tenaria. What you do now is you work on as we talked about. Uh, I'd, I'd give Helen Thal, or uh, I'm sorry, I have Helenthal in my brain. He just scored. I'd give Heller some more snaps here 
Um, you need to talk to your offense. Tell them we have to, we have to execute. It's 6:04 left. We can't just give up the ship and uh, go from there. We'd like to remind you, high school football on WYLN brought to you by AM19 Delivers. Fast, free, reliable service. Use the same dry cleaning service used by the Cougar football team. Call Angelo today at 570-436-2705. And by Valley Pets. Why pay big box pricing when you can have quality and affordability at your neighborhood pet supply store? On October 26th, Valley Pets celebrated their fifth year anniversary. While we have a moment, a couple of weeks ago was uh, the wedding of Chris Jayus and his lovely bride, Megan. Uh, Chris, the son of our very own Barry Jayus and his wife, Michelle, and Chris, a former top running back and linebacker at Bishop Hafey. And Chris, always a quality young man, so congratulations to him and Megan on their wedding a couple weeks ago, two Saturdays ago, and many years of happiness to Chris and Megan. As Oaks brings the ball out to the 35 yard line for a first and 10. Bulldogs go five plays, 62 yards, 222 off the clock. Hellenthal, three carries, 30 yards, including his last one from 18 yards out for the touchdown. A lot of the uh, younger players on the field defensively for the Bulldogs as the Cougars come to the line of scrimmage. Zukowski is going to throw it, looking for Oaks, incomplete. Nice throw, strong arm by Zukowski to get it down there. Good coverage, Berwick doesn't give up the receiver. Josh Gregory on the coverage. Morty, I know we haven't talked a lot tonight about the playoffs, but we have Crestwood Coughlin tomorrow night, I believe. And it's uh, going to be at Wilkes-Barre Memorial Stadium. Uh, looks like b to be the determining factor for that fourth team. Zukowski will get 10 plus on the carry before being brought down by Tom Laba. Laba, a six foot 175 pound junior, makes that tackle after Zukowski picks up good yardage. Ball marked at the 48, gain of 13 on the play. The officials time out. It's like uh, that Zeb Kopchinski with problems with his helmet. Trying to get it, uh, and Oaks also uh, had his helmet off as well. First and 10 from the Cougar 48. This time it'll be Nick George on the carry. George into Bulldog territory. He's brought down at the 44. Gain of eight. Coach Drumheller doing uh, a I believe a, a good job here running his offense, working on letting Heller take some snaps there as they run that inside play yeah. with the backside lineman pulling and picking up good yardage again. Zach Zukowski with the gain of 12 yards, that will put him over 1,000 yards for the season. And congratulations to Zach Zukowski on this run here. There you see Zukowski getting up the field, and you're right, Marty, he's had a very good year for the Cougars. Zach Zukowski, over 1,000, uh, our hats go off to him. And he'll be one of those players leaned upon next year as he'll be back for his senior season. Heller looking to pass, looking for the screen to George as he slips down for a loss of two at the 34. I'll tell you again, Heller uh, needs to get that ball a little higher. That pressure up the field 
Schechterly was up the field with pressure and it caused Heller to get rid of the ball, but a little short, so the, the screen looked like it was set up. He just didn't get the ball there. And, and that was because of the pressure from that Bulldog front. Second and 12 from the 34. Zukowski again on the carry. He'll get about four to the 30. Brought down by Tanner Kachurka. Kachurka with a nice, uh, he stepped up in there and made the tackle again, another junior who does a good job defensively. And Joe, I gotta get this in before the uh, game ends a week from tonight. I'll be celebrating my fifth wedding anniversary with my lovely bride, Danielle, so just wanted to wish her a happy anniversary, and can you believe she's put up with me this long? Oh, she, she's a saint, too. <laughs> um, George, George, a short gain on third down. In a series, Spain, congratulations Thank to you. you and Danielle. And five years, I remember being at the wedding, and can't believe five years have gone by that fast. But, Fourth down for the Cougars, Marty. 140 left. Bulldogs undefeated regular season. That has a pretty good sound to it if you're a Burke fan. On fourth down, a toss to Zukowski. Cuts it back. Zukowski stays on his feet very near the first down, and I believe by the official spot they'll give it to him. It's a Harry's you pull it first down. I'll tell you what, the Bulldogs had him trapped on the left side offensively, right side defensively, but the backside didn't get there, and nice bit of running as Hazelton area moving the ball here. A lot of action has to take place on the weekend, but uh, uh, it is believed that the winner of that Crestwood Coughlin game would be the four seed, and uh, that's who Berwick would be hosting. But we say that uh, with an asterisk that, uh, depending what happens tonight uh, in some other action, that uh, the seeding may change as well. Yeah, you have Abington Heights playing Scranton, I believe, and I think that's tonight. Uh, that's a big game. Crestwood, uh, Coughlin tomorrow night, big game. Berwick will host probably uh, one of those teams, the winner being the fourth place team in the district. Zukowski inside the 10, out of bounds inside the five. The one team I don't think they would play next weekend would be Scranton Prep, who going into tomorrow is also 9-0. Yeah, and they're, I believe, ranked second in the district right now, so I, I think you're right, Marty. That's a team that Berwick would see if both win down the road. Hazel Tenaria takes a timeout. They don't want the clock to continue to run. Want to try to get the score before the clock runs out. And I believe Barry Jay said he had a picture from the wedding. And there's Chris and Megan. And uh, congratulations to them both. And uh, we've had a chance to see Chris play at Bishop Hafey, uh, outstanding running back and linebacker. And, one of the things about Chris, he always had a smile on his face that uh, uh, always very pleasant and always enjoyed talking to him, and uh, congratulations to him. Best of luck to the new bride and groom. So a first and goal coming up for the Cougars from the three with 27.2 seconds left. I would think if they don't get it in, they do have another timeout that they would uh, probably like to burn uh, to try to end this season with a scoring drive. I'll be honest with you. I would, If I were on that sideline, I'd want them end the season with a uh, scoring drive. And we're looking at a touchdown, I believe, with a toss to the left side. Nick George with the touchdown run. Cougars on the board. Fifth rushing touchdown for Nick George on the service electric books by replay. You know, now, Marty, when you look at this, you're looking toward next year. I mean, you, you have a kicker here who's Williams, pretty good kicker, so you're going to go ahead and kick it. But you know, everything you do from this point on is for next year. 
and I mean next football season. And when you're in the weight room, that's the thought you have to have. Off season, you point toward that first game next fall. Williams point after was good with 23.2 seconds remaining. And the Cougars get on the board trailing 43 to seven. But I think a lot of the confidence boost that Zach Sukoski picked up his thousand yards on that last drive get him to that milestone and, and have him have a good feeling heading into the uh, off season and uh, getting ready for his senior season as uh, one of the key cogs of the uh, Cougar offense for next year. Yeah, one of the things when I look at Hazel Terry, I, I, I look at their offensive line, all seniors. Um, so you, you're going to lose a very good group there as we look at our player, Fairway Motors player of the game. Jordan Stout, four rushing touchdowns on the night. Finished with 16 carries, 98 yards in those four touchdowns, and also some big plays from his linebacker spot on defense. Exactly. I think that the offense was one thing, but he made some very nice plays on the defensive side of the ball. Congratulations to Jordan Stout, our fairway Subaru player of the game. Big night carrying the load offensively for Stout, getting the Bulldogs ready for the playoffs next weekend. Cougars, they're a lot, probably their last offensive possession of the year. 11 plays, 65 yards, 540 off the clock. Zukoski on that drive, five carries, 49 yards. And in there, he picked up his 1,000 yard on the season. Nick George, from four yards out, got the Cougars on the board. Williams to kick it away. And it's going to roll and get it into the end zone for the touchback. Marty, I have to tell you that uh, as we go to the last 23 seconds, I enjoyed the year. Enjoyed it's been a working pleasure as always, buddy. And, uh, See if I can get my contract renewed for next year. Well, we certainly hope so. As uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed it, uh, you are definitely the best in the business, and I don't care what anybody says. Uh, best analyst that uh, you can work with. And uh, on that note, uh, got to thank the uh, fine production crew who's done a great job all season long. Uh, good for them that uh, the conditions have been uh, very good for them, but. Uh, a great crew to work with, the best in the business, bringing a lot of the great shots you see here on WYLN as uh, Arner will run the last play of the regular season for the Bulldogs. Take it to the right side and gain about two yards on the play as the Berwick Bulldogs finish the regular season with a 10-0 record as they come away with the victory tonight by a score of 43-7 as they'll await a future opponent next weekend as the district playoffs in AAA begin in the state of Pennsylvania. I'm sure that uh, Coach Curry will be very attentive to the Scranton prep game tomorrow afternoon, as well as what goes on at Wilkes-Barre Memorial Stadium tomorrow night between Crestwood and Coughlin. I think one of the things, Marty, you look at both teams uh, exchanging handshakes as Joe Flanagan is trying to get himself situated on the field, but um, you have to be impressed with the Bulldogs. We talked about this. Their, their strengths. As the Bulldogs go to 10 and 0, C.J. Curry 10 of 14 passing tonight, 142 yards and a touchdown. Turn home six receptions, 67 yards, and our fairway Subaru player of the game, Jordan Stout, 16 carries, 98 yards, 
four rushing touchdowns as the Bulldogs go to 10 and 0 on this 2013 regular season. A balanced attack, 226 yards on the ground, 166 through the air for the Bulldogs. 392 yards of total offense. Uh, it was a little bit of a grind for about a half, but a big third quarter for the Bulldogs. Get them the 10 and 0 as they'll await their playoff opponent next weekend. I'll tell you what, Marty, it was a grind in the beginning. They wore that uh, Hazleton defense down. And again, we talked about the offensive line and, and the strength of the uh, blocking, the up bats blocking for Jordan Stout. But uh, Bulldogs definitely uh, on their game tonight and ready for the playoffs. As they had their last meeting before heading into the locker room with Coach Curry. As this Bulldog team will be very dangerous come the playoffs beginning next weekend. Looking in amidst the crowd. And Joe Flanagan is grabbed. Winning head coach. Let's head down to the field. And George Curry. Coach, uh, second, uh, first drive of the second half really seemed to set the tempo for your offense. What, any changes at halftime? Oh, yeah. We, we straightened some blocking schemes out and some just showed them what they're doing on the board. Uh, defensively, had our defense in our formations. And we took advantage of some things. And we played better. We played more hard. I get on their butt. You got to play with heart. You know what I mean? We, we, we went through the motions. And we, we, we cranked it up and we played better. I heard you talking and your team had a little bit about being 10 and 0. What, what's that mean to the program? Well, they, this is the 17, 17th team that since Burke football started that had an undefeated regular season. So uh, that's, we wanted to put our name in the record books. And now the second season starts. Football's two seasons, regular season, postseason. Now we've now we got a six-game schedule. All right, Coach, congratulations. Good luck in the playoffs. Congratulations on the 10-0 regular season, and good luck. Thank you very much. All Have right. a good day. Okay. Back upstairs to you, Joe and Marty. Thanks a lot, Coach, and uh, thank you, Joe. And, Coach, you have a good day as well. I, one of the things he mentioned is that they, they got after him. They played harder in the second half, and, and uh, that showed it on the uh, field. And as he mentioned, a very big accomplishment. You didn't want to have a stumble here and uh, head to the playoffs 9-1. It was something to play for. You got yourself uh, as one of 17 teams in the Berwick football history to say you went undefeated. And uh, it's definitely quite an accomplishment. As, as you know, it's not easy to just simply say, you know, you're going to go 10-0. No, it's, and, and it's not easy by any means. It's a, a difficult road. Everybody's shooting for you. But as I said, Berwick at the top of their game. Looking forward to uh, next Saturday. Get a look at that score by quarter. And as we mentioned, it was a little bit of a struggle as the Bulldogs only led 9-0 at the half. But that big third quarter, including a spurt, where in a 3-minute, 11-second span, the Bulldogs scored three touchdowns, put them up 29-0, and they didn't look back as they would come away with the 43-7 victory over Hazelton area as uh, the Cougars say goodbye officially to a what uh, Coach Drumheller has uh, grouped as a great group of seniors. And uh, fortunately, their season will end with a 3-7 and seven record. Berwick heads to the playoffs 10-0. Going to get a look at the post-game recap brought to you by Service Electric Wilkes-Barre, starting with the opening drive, 11 plays, 77 yards. Jordan Stout capped it off with the two-yard run. That made it 6 nothing, and then a... Uh, Tough to handle the snap for Dallas Arner, and the Cougars will recover, keeping the score 6 0. Heading to second quarter action in the final three minutes of the opening half, Dane Kowalski picked up the punt, and he would go 55 yards on this punt return that would take the Bulldogs all the way down to the Cougar 21 yard line, and that would set up Olivia Seeley from 31 yards out, and that made it 9 0 Bulldogs. After a fumble recovery with 22 seconds left, a double pass, Arner found Kowalski, and that would get the Bulldogs down inside the 20. And in the final seconds of the half, Curry over the middle to Trenholm, and he'd get down to the three. The Bulldogs were able to down it with one second left. Seeley tried the field goal, and it would just go off the goal post, no good, and at the half, it was nine nothing Bulldogs. And in the third quarter, Trenholm, a big kickoff return. 
that would get the Bulldogs great starting field position. A couple penalties brought it back to the 44. The Bulldogs will go 56 yards in eight plays. Stout, his second touchdown of the night from one yard out. The point after was blocked, made it 15-0. Then after a short field, Stout from six yards out into the end zone, point after good, made it 22-0 Berwick. And then Mazonki with the big hit and sack, forcing the fumble that would give Berwick the ball at the 42, one play. C.J. Curry to Vandermark. And he would go from 42 yards out, point after good, made it 29-0 Berwick. First play of the fourth quarter, Stout for the fourth time on the night. Point after was good, making it 36-0 Bulldogs. And then we saw some of the youth, Daquan Hellenthal from 18 yards out, capped the 62-yard drive, making it 43-0 Bulldogs. And on a drive, that got Zach Sukoski his 1,000th yard. This run will get the Cougars inside the five to the four. And Nick George would end the 65 yard scoring drive with the touchdown, making it 43-7. And that's the way it would end. The Berwick Bulldogs finish the regular season a perfect 10-0 and come away with a 43-7 victory over the Hazel Tenaria Cougars on our regular season finale of high school football game of the week here on WYLN. Joe, your final thoughts on tonight and uh, the regular season as a whole. I thought the wet regular season gave us a couple very good games. Uh, most of the games were competitive. I think the other thing you have to look about tonight is I believe Hazleton does have a future. I think there are some players there that definitely could be the keystone for that team. Bulldogs, second season coming up. First game next week at Crisman Field. See what happens. And I'll tell you what, we haven't seen every team but, boy, Berwick was good. they have uh, I would say they were probably the best team we saw all year. Yeah, they're impressive. Uh, like I said, both sides of the ball. Offensively, they can get some things done. They have some skilled people. They can run defensively. Their defensive front bottles you up. Linebackers can make plays. So, but definitely a very good football team. Buddy, I've enjoyed it. Hopefully we have uh, some action down the line and get to work with you once again, my friend. Thank you for everything, and thank you. To our outstanding production crew, without them, we wouldn't be able to get you the great shots that you've seen week after week here on WYLN. For our director, Barry Jayus, for the stat man, Jim Burns, for Joe Flanagan, Joe DeMelfi, I'm Marty Burns saying so long. The final score once again, Berwick finishes off the regular season 10-0 with a 43-7 victory over Hazel Tenaria. This has been a WYLN Sports Special presentation. Good night from Hazleton.